keeping with the same gender might be uh, a better option. Yeah, I I'm just still... finished uh, re watching the video, so I'm I'm all caught up. I'm oh, still okay. not convinced. I think we should still maybe <laughs> slit his Achilles heel. Now, as we I left our I need it for a spell. Slow him down. I need it for a spell. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> got to watch Creel. Uh, <laughs> with his scaly behind and smoking footprints mm -hmm. now. Smoking? Yes. Oh, yeah, That's... the... Uh, the little cinders that come off as I walk, and if I stay oh, yes. in one place too yeah, long, the, the yeah. ash. Yeah, the ashes. Yeah. <laughs> could start like a fire. Well, don't worry about that, Jim. That it didn't say you didn't start fires. Yeah, dude, forest fire. I'm. Oh, for sure. Yeah, in the right in the right conditions, I definitely will start forest fires. <laughs> Yikes. This pro this place is probably well kept. They probably keep up with it. So you yeah, guys see, dusk is near. You're in the, your the village isn't far apparently. This is a spot that they've designated as the sacrificial hill, and it's got this pole there with some old stains on it. It's marked and slashed, and you've just processed. You've hooked Prepper up with some fake bonds, and she's got her weapons kind of hidden beside the pole, so she grabbed whatever she needs, like at a notice. And then you guys are going to range yourselves wherever you wish. That was the plan. Mm hmm. Now, oh, did see. they, did, are we able to ascertain, I remember some, we were doing some good rolls at the end of the session. Could we tell like where the beast is coming from? Mm, good call. Uh, dusk is coming, but you had, a, I said you did have a little bit of time to look around and you made some good rolls and that the mystery was there were no, okay. So somebody had to look, run around a bit and look and you couldn't find any footprints uh it was a mystery was some... where the beast came from yeah there was something like didn't uh Gryco figure that there were like ta uh, like uh, wolf marks in the pole like claw, yeah think... claw marks on the pole hmm. Hmm. and you'd met a big entourage of course that had brought a woman or young a teenager uh, uh, with braided hair who had been struggling a bit and you had said that well we'll stay here and kill the demon just to summarize quickly and you met the jarl and the seven thanes and there were about 20 or 30 villagers with them with pitchforks and torches uh but in rugged folk mountain folk from the north viking type and you had your little banter and ended up uh they reluctantly well the the thane reluctantly agreed sort of you you guys sort of asserted yourselves and said, oh, we'll do this. And then he kind of smirked and said, fine. But but then they left they quick in a hurry because they saw dusk was coming. Yeah, I, I think um, I, I, I'm kind of interested in putting Rotsack in the tree directly south of me. Um, you know, I, I don't wonder if, in fact, our Claude Fiend will follow the natural topography up the up the hill, you know, savoring this moment. All right. It may now, have wings. Yeah, that's Thunder. what I was thinking. That's a possibility, in which case it almost doesn't matter where we're at then. True. So as everybody has a moment to look around, you didn't find tracks, you found a bunch of mound of skulls where they put the victims uh, apparently the creature doesn't eat the, the bodies or anything. It just leaves them mangled. It revels. Just and, sucks the flesh off. Or, yeah, it rends them. Yeah, shreds them, flays them. Grotesquely, it's quite a horrific ordeal. Uh, you're looking around. Now, so the scale is fairly accurate, just so you know, right? If you want to move, uh, you have to check your movement rates and everything like that. Few minutes tick by and the sun is setting and edges across the mountains it's early up here the sun goes down a bit early of course and and there's a few moments hesitation and a sort of mist quickly ascends over the place or descends pardon me whatever and there's a howl that rips through the night and it's an unearthly howl and you, you have to describe it as a demonic howl. And even the, you know, you're braved a lot, you've seen a lot, but you still kind of clench and pucker up. 
sends a shiver down your spine. And there's a darkness coalescing in the sky and it's arcing quickly up the river, moving fast and comes streaking behind Greco, not directly, but like on the shore here, this black swirling darkness. And you can sense, or you're, you're, depends on your alignment here, sort of, I must admit. If you're of uh, the lawful type, you would be repulsed by this, of course, even neutral and chaotic perhaps uh, for different reasons. The, the thing uh, moves, it's moving fast. It moves by, it's flying and it's coalescing into the shape of this huge hound and it's demonic hound. It's got scales down its, its side. It doesn't seem to have wings. It just has a, a capability to fly, it's flying. And it's, it's arcing quickly and has huge paws. And this thing is larger than a horse easily. Uh, more like a, a hippopotamus in girth. It's massive, black, and it's got red glowing eyes. And this must be the hound, of course. Uh, you can act, anybody can act at this point. Like you guys aren't, you, it doesn't seem to notice you. It's going towards Pepper. Um, so when you say flying, how, how far above the ground is it? Probably about, uh, 40 feet. Oh, oh, I cast a spell. Okay. So let's, uh, roll Oh no, you guys have a surprise act. You guys surprised it. Apparently what you think <laughs> it's going mm -hmm. straight for the prey though. It's eyes right. and Pepper looks at it and Pepper, you hear her Pepper scream as she sees it and it, it looks at her and she's hopefully, grabbing her weapons. Like, <laughs> hopefully, uh, hopefully this will help. As so you waves... guys can act in whichever order you wish. I'll just let you go. Sorry, Jim. Uh, go ahead. You're going to cast. Oh, did... Yes. Waves of blue light come shooting from the tree at the thing in hopes that sleep will affect it. Uh, well, we'll see. You can cat, uh, roll to see if the spell works and such. Uh, I got a 19 on my roll. No, it does not affect it. I see. Uh, okay, well, I'm, uh, I'm launching an arrow with my short bow towards it. Um, now, now, would I get backstabbed for that since I'm uh, hidden up in that tree? I'll... No, no, that doesn't work with missiles. In oh, it doesn't? No, you can't okay. backstab with an arrow. Okay, huh. Well, well no, no, I'll... that's not true. You don't get any extra damage and stuff like that. I guess you get your surprise shots. You, I'll give you a bonus for that. Okay. Uh, yeah. Cool. You get an extra die on the die chain. I'm assuming that... A, a D24. Uh, I'm going to see what this button does. Yeah, I think it, that works. I'm not sure if they fixed that or not. Mm, maybe so not. This is some demonic creature that has come to claim its lottery. <laughs> it's come to. And it's the thing that's probably has been haunting the village of Herlot. Ooh, and that is a good shot, even with the range. Let me double check because, uh, yes, I think it is. Okay, and damage four. Now the arrow does sink into its sort of chest, torso, front, and it, it twitches back like it, it feels it. it. You've done damage to this thing. You oh, think, okay. you, hope, you think. Ooh, maybe we needed like a... Silvered weapons or something. This is bad. Mm. We sold our silver daggers. <laughs> yeah, we did, didn't we? <laughs> oh, <fuck. laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> uh, that's, but that's I look me. fantastic. Yeah, yeah, we do. That's the important thing. All right. So uh, who's next? You guys still can all act. And then we'll roll initiative. Okay, well, yeah, so let's do this. I'll go ahead and I'll just fling an iron spike at it from afar. That'll be 
uh, even height disadvantage too, it's going to be probably long range. Okay. Is it so, like a D16? No, I think on that, that's the, oh, I need to open up my, uh, Actually, I got it right here. Pardon me, I don't have my Dungeons Master screen open. It's got the... Uh, it is minus one die for long range. Long range, I thought so. Because it's minus yeah. two on the roll, or minus one on the roll for medium range? Minus, minus two on the roll for medium. That's the one. Okay, there it is, yeah. So you roll D16. All right, fair enough. I uh, hit a 15. Oh, impressive. Okay, one moment. I have to look up a couple of things. Ah, there it is. Ooh, now that, that was with long range. You did the minus? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, sweet. Okay. That is a hit. Just right. go to the side, you just hit the side of it, and it's, but it, it's just, oh, it seems to be going. Well, you're not sure what it's going to do. Yeah, I so. probably didn't really notice that two points. <laughs> probably thought it hit a tree or something on the way up. <laughs> uh, and Bob, you fired. Creel, your mm -hmm. spell, so you're all done. Uh, Rotsack, he's like, oh, look at the beast. And he was going to run out, but he saw that it was flying straight at Pepper. He had anticipated that. And he doesn't have his other, his, his missile weapon, so he... Oh, he's just going to run. Ah, and he's going to try run. He's going to make a, a roll to see if he can just. Oh, nice roll. Nice roll. So he's going to just head to try cut it off. He's going to. That's probably about 30 feet. And then. Okay. So he'll, he'll, he'll get, just get up there. He successfully scrambles up with his. It takes him his action though. And anyone left? Uh, Pepper. Pepper runs. <laughs> <She's>, <laughs> she grabs her sword and she just, holy shit. And she runs to the edge and she's going to make a roll to see if she can scramble down. She hasn't seen something like this before. Oh, no. Uh, yeah, oh, that's a lot of luck. Uh, <laughs> she wipes out and kind of scrambles down the other side. Oh, that's a lot of luck to burn. Oh wait, stop, hold on, I'll, I will, because she was gonna take die six damage, she would take five, but I will burn the luck, I was gonna say, because she's a thief, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, mm-hmm. Uh, so, let me think a minute, and she has D4 on her luck die, so she'll burn, yeah, she can burn like two luck and, and, and might should be able to do it, I hope so. Oh, shit, <laughs> four, six, oh yeah, okay. So she goes about to trip and stumbles sideways a little bit, and then you see her amazingly do a cartwheel. Nice. nice. And uh, kind of pirouettes, and it must be she was trained classically, like she was noble raised, so she was probably had ballerina training and such. And she does this move and lands on her feet, duh, can't help it, bow a little bit, but then ah, gives it, and that's her action move. She's getting the out of dodge. She's just a. 90 pound 18 year old and that's it for you guys so now we roll initiative and you guys are, holy crap everybody's let me just erase the old things before you guys hit it pardon me this thing's big oh, yeah look at the size of it the thing is like oh my god Okay, I got a 16 for the creature. Let's see. I I rolled an 11 and then you deleted it. So if you could just. Oh, pardon me. I shall all, fix that right up. All good. Oh, yikes. Okay. You rolled a 16 or 11? Oh, got it. I got a 11. Yeah. Uh, anyone left? Oh, Rotsack. Uh, he's. I can open up the screen real quick a minute. And uh, are... Pepper. We are a group yeah. that likes to wait and see what's going to happen first. <laughs> Is that right? Take your best shot. Oh, he's got a No, you it. swing. <laughs> yeah, no, after you. Well, 
it's worked out so far. Yeah, I just have to open their sheets here, and then I won't have to fiddle with this again. Oh, but I forgot to highlight the thing. No, oh, they haven't fixed that yet, have they? That's annoying. Okay. Anyway. There we go. I'll straighten it out, put it in order. And Rotsack, wow. So he's like, oh, you foul demon. Uh, I think Pepper had the 22 and Rotsack had a 6. Yeah, yeah. your turn <laughs> order doesn't match what I'm seeing in the chat. Oops, yeah, I was okay. like, I, I think it didn't line up. I was like, <laughs> I, Rotsack I'm totally has up a to 16. You. Oh, okay, I knew something. Okay, because I didn't notice I did that. Is that right? I, mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm showing Pepper with 22. Yeah, and Rod Sack with a six. Yep. All right, Pepper. Oh, my. She's kind of down around the edge now. She's going to kind of like, oh, shoot, oh, shoot. Uh, she's going to slowly climb up the other side. And look and kind of ah. just well that's her action is climbing back up to the edge carefully but she's going to sneak she's going to hide in shadows on the ledge okay so that's what she's doing and the creature it, it's like it's got this arrow sticking into it but it reaches down and flicks it out with its mouth rips it out and then and it launches itself at rotsack and rotsack was of course put itself in the way and the creature just turns on him with its red eyes and has it moves very fast, faster than such a large creature can. And its two claws move quickly and it goes to bite him all in almost one blurred motion of, in this ferocious roar as its blackened teeth snap him. Pardon me, I have to make sure I got. Ooh, yeah, that is. Okay, two first are the claw. Oh. That's a uh, mean. Oh, shit. Okay, the creature, unfortunately, gets a chunk. And let me get myself further set up here as it's... Now, the first attack was a... Ooh, the crit. I don't see I Creel's boat ride south happening after the encounter. <laughs> out. I've got the yeah. monster crit table if you need, Darren. Oh, you do. Okay. So we're gonna be go. stranded here. So Jim, oh, we got a nine. A mm. nine. Strike to helm. If no helmet, this attack inflicts plus one d8 damage and forces a fort save. Um. It's a DC 10 plus hit die for the monster, I guess. On a failed save, the PC falls unconscious. Okay, now I'm assuming he has a helmet. I picture him like the guy, the picture behind me on the... I picture yeah. that as Rotak. Is actually why I oh, for sure. There. Oh, okay. Uh, so he does have a helmet. And what were the consequences with a helmet? Now he does take die four. Now this was one of the claws. He swiped him. He takes two damage. Mm-hmm. And Jim, so uh, he, he uh, makes a fortitude save, which is a DC 10 plus um, a monster's hit die. Ah. I Even if he has was, a helmet? Yeah, I thought that was if he didn't have a helmet. Um, if no. Oh, I guess. Okay, yeah, sorry. That is how it reads. Um, this, so is it's just ride, a... this is your ride. This is your ride sound. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's okay. If no helmet, this attack afflicts one uh, d eight damage and forces a fort save. Yes, okay, you're right, so, Jim. He does have to make the save still. Yeah, I wasn't oh, no, sure. No. It's yeah. If, it it all it, it sounds like if he didn't have a helmet, all that stuff happens. If he has a helmet, it's just a a big hit to the head. Yeah, yeah I see. What yeah, you're it saying. didn't do any extra damage, Jim. I'm I'm wrong. Yeah. That's kind of Lucky fucker. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> okay, but it, it took. Okay, so he took two damage. And then uh, the other one was a miss, and now his bite, the creature. 
and it's a mighty, and that's, oh, that's a hit because it's plus three. Now this is die eight damage. Oh, well, Rotsack is, uh, the gods are with him. Both, <laughs> it's a sturdy helmet and shitty die rolling. The creature is magic this, helmet. Yeah, Rotsack's just holding his own. Ah, yeah. <laughs> by Odin. Real. All right. Up. I I get my mirrors ready, and mm. uh, I try to catch the reflection of the sun, and uh, I'm shining. I'm shining it in between the mirrors, and as I do so, I start sort of doing the old uh, jump rope, sort of boxing move, and I look like one of those home video uh, workout videos. And as I'm dancing over towards Rotsack, um, putting him clearly between me and the creature, uh, I touch Rotsack as I cast a uh, strength spell. All right. You have put yourself in danger, though, Jim. But I know. He is, yeah. But he's between us. Yep, that's true. The creature seems to want to get rot sack at the moment. Ooh. Ooh, that's close. Ah! Okay, so failure, but spell is not lost. I don't have any luck to burn, so... Pepper's going to burn luck on you. Oh, beauty. Uh, she's going to give you... Ah, fuck. One... Oh... <laughs> uh, a single more and I'd be good. I'll, 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 I'll burn. I'll burn at one, two. I'll roll D4 uh, for Jim. Are you D5 yet or D4? No, so? I'm D4. Okay. I'm only second level still. Four. Four. Okay, yep. so. Um, By the way, everyone. Oh, we already got one. Please don't forget it. Yeah. yeah I added one. one target the caster touches briefly gains superhuman strength. The target is treated mm -hmm. as having a strength modifier of plus 10 until the end of the next round. Wow, Good. okay. So plus this 10? round, plus wow. 10 modifier to strength. Okay, let me check real quick. That'll give him 26 strength. Um, Is that what they mean? Or, or no, plus like, 10 to the attack? Plus 10 to his modifier. So if he's oh, got a shit. plus 1 modifier, it's plus 11. Whoa. Oh, I see. He's plus, so he's plus 12. <laughs> <It's next. laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, wow. So he's... And it manifested how it kind of went into him, right? You were, oh, that was the oh, yeah. focus. I was doing the old Richard Simmons. Oh, nice. I'm, I'm trying right. to work him up. <laughs> Come on, everybody. And Greco, you were you're back in the bush, I guess. Yeah. So I guess I'm gonna run up and around. Uh, so <clears throat> uh, I have a run of sixty. Yeah, but then you're, that's your action. Okay. So I otherwise I have a walk of 30. <clears throat> right. And then an action. Yeah. So I'm not 100% sure. How do I go about measuring stuff? On the left, there's a toolbar, taskbar, yeah. and there's a little ruler in a circle. You select that one, and then you can. Okay, the there we down. go. And uh, that was me. Oh. You hold the mouse button down and you'll drag a uh, rule number thing. Yeah. Okay. Um, <clears throat> yeah. So. Uh, if, it's my uh, deed. <clears throat> okay. Because, <clears throat> uh, well, I guess is this thing still like 40 feet in the air or? Nope. It's fighting Rotsack. Uh, okay. So Ty, I, I, I'm putting you on a clock soon. Yeah. On... Well, I'm, I'm just <laughs> planning on charging up there to kill it. Go for what it. I'm going to do. All right. Uh, yeah. So this is a full on berserker over overhead. Uh, well, I, I guess <laughs> is this thing on, on its rear legs exposing its belly? No, they're moving around in combat and shit. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so I'm going to go Berserker style. Just go charging up there. 
and uh, you know a- attack with uh, full malice. Oh, okay, so yeah, I made my deed, and uh, which was to do a grievous injury, some ma- malicious injury. <clears throat> okay, well, the only hit was the only way to get to him was directly, and you could have mighty deeded up the bluff. That's what I would. That's the only way you could reach him. He's probably twelve feet up on a ledge. Okay, and so. You could you could run around the side, but that takes up your action. Okay, and, well, and... yeah, I mean, so that was sort of my plan was to do the berserker charge thing. Okay, can you I, can you tell I what is your intent? Well, like, it was going to be like him because, as I said, then you have to make a, a a deed move to run up. Okay, so you run directly at him and went up the cliff to attack him. You didn't run around because I I thought you said you were going to go around. But you're going right at him. Uh, yeah, yeah. It, like I was, I want to do like Frank Frazetta style, where you know, the guy like this doing the full on. Okay, all fine. Out Let's attack, just go with it. I guess. All right, we'll just go with it. You somehow launch yourself high in the air <laughs> and catch a a piece, and it was a good roll, and good enough to see, to get get the beast for a mighty wound. Holy cow, cleaving deeply into the back of this thing, which is sort of unaware, but it's fast, super fast. So it was spinning already, but you cleaved it mightily. It's still alive. Not for long. <laughs> Rotsack, though, is muscles bulging. And that's, he goes to hack it. Uh, he's plus two. Oh, he's plus 12, you say? Oh, my Lord. Correct. And he's got a D die as well, I forgot. Oh, what? How did I? I rolled a D20 plus 12. How did I roll a four? Let's try that. I must have. Well, you got to. Holy. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Not too bad. (laughs) Um, 32. (laughs) <laughs> that's, that's absurd um Hope okay hits. hold on so this thing had it's, it's taken 18 hits let me double check its hit points uh that's gonna be crit he gets a d60 i don't know what was uh, i have to look up his quit i think he gets a d16 on the table three um well it's sort of a moot point because he chops the thing in half <laughs> but <laughs> what you see as he carves it just as a blade hits the center of the thing's head and as you, you picture the thing being cut in half in one of those classic rot sack moves but the blade as soon as it hits its head and seems to part the skin for that deadly wound the creature just puffs in black oily mist and the wound doesn't the sword follows through and rot sack falls forward into Greco sort of stumbling forward into into this through this mist and why well, kind of cartwheels comically if it wasn't so serious and the mist swirls up and away and goes up into the sky and disappears dissipates oh it's just that easy i don't think we've seen the last of that thing So, Rotsek, what is that? Uh, he looks at he's, he gets up and he gets his weapon. Oh, that is I feared, as my grandmother used to tell us at the fire. And it is a spirit our folk used to worship in the past. They were they sacrificed to it. Beautiful women and such. But that was long ago. It must be returned. Demanding blood. I don't know though. Strange. Where is its lair? Hmm. Perhaps those at the village may know. Yeah, and I'm looking around to see. Do I do I spy smoke going somewhere? Or... 
It was hard to tell. Um, it seemed to go yeah, vaguely. Uh, no, it dissipated and no, just went up. It seems seems it was a random direction with the wind at that point. Hmm. Well, I thought it was going pretty well up until it disappeared. Yes, well, uh, no doubt, Rotzak. Uh, mighty strike. Mighty strike. Yes. But Epper awesome. comes out of the some bushes and is grubbing. Oh, that was a close thing. I'm gonna have to put... Yeah, how are we going to explain this to the villagers? I mean, hopefully the... Uh... Hopefully the creature doesn't return in the night, but we have no proof that we fought the thing. Well, we can, uh, I think we can certainly truthfully state that we wounded it and sent it back to its lair uh, and that they need to explain where the lair is. Yeah, that's, that, we're that still in idea. it. You think, well, you think this is the lair? Uh, so we saw it coming from the east. Um, uh I, did did uh, Darren? Did you say that I first saw it when it was over the water or coming out of the water, out of the river mm -hmm. there uh, to the east? It could have uh, been flying down the river channel. Yeah, uh, you're not. Yeah, possibly it came so from the river area. Yeah, I, I'm I'm just super keen on, you know, catching it. Catching mm -hmm. it while it's wounded, you know. Well, I think we could probably go back to the village, like uh, like you were all saying, and try to try to appeal to their good nature, and uh, we may be able to find out more about where this lair is. How about you, Biggest? Are you ready to go back to your old village? <laughs> he smirks. I. I suppose we truly must save this place from this demon. It's, I'm not sure. That was strange. Just disappeared. Yes, let's Rotsang, go. Do you know of any sort of mythical um, weapon that your folks may have used? Maybe perhaps even something that your family may have hidden away? I feel like if we had a truly... Um, sacred weapon we may be able to deal a deathly blow to the creature oh, he goes there are rumors of these things and i know someone who might be able to make give us some answers if she still lives i'm just gonna put the cat out it's okay you can just go outside Sit still. He goes, I'm not sure. There are myths and legends about weapons and warriors and heroes. I know vague things. Yes, the old the old chiefs and thanes, they worshipped the, the demons and evil spirits, and some of them fought them, and they had weapons and armor and clothing, it said, and drinking things and horns that they used but that's all myth most of them were buried away hmm. in the, yeah mounds and such i do not know where these are these burrows of which you speak <laughs> hmm. let us then head down to the barrows no, let's let's go back to the village Yeah, and he's, yeah, and you guys get some torches and stuff, and it's getting really dark as you move down the road. And uh, Rotsack, he says, "Well, I'll, I'll let you take the lead, and and uh, you know, of course, I'll t keep a low pro profile for a while." Yeah. Sounds good. The wooded moors give away to mist-laden fields. 
Ahead up in the narrow track stands the village of Herlot. The village is defended by a low earthen rampart topped with a wooden palisade. And behind the village, a causeway rises to a great hall resting atop a craggy ridge. Black earth smoke hangs forlornly over the village as even the smoke were too frightened to venture beyond the village walls. Solitary figures give out a cry and a long mournful horn is sounded, echoing down the vale, declaring your approach. And I'll bring you to a new map. Featuring the village of Herlot. Oh, that's fine. Got the jungles here, not quite. Oh, we're missing a couple. Actually, let me bring in the other troop. It's probably the wrong. Can you guys control your avatars right now? Yeah, I can. Oh, okay. I can. All right, that's good then. I'll just bring the two. So this is a classic Viking stronghold. There's some civilization here, of course. And for the moment, we're kind of moving as a party. And uh, there's two guys up on, on top of the wall, dressed sort of in the Viking manner and wearing leather armor, dark, rough hides. And they're looking down and, oi! Hey, look, it's the outsiders. They're alive. A pair of militia men there. And he goes, I'm Mokul, and this is Naven. Pleased to meet you, Urkel. Will you open the gate, please? And there's, a, there's an iron brazier burning there, and they're armed with spears and wooden shields. And they're kind of looking, and he goes, Oh, hey, well, it's, it's getting dark soon. Uh, I suppose we can let you in, though. Uh, and there's some, a few people, you look beyond the village wall and, and they open the door for you and they go, so what happened? Did you, did you, did you see it? Well, my brothers, we have a tale. Indeed. Well, there should be a few people over there on the main square. We blew the horn. Uh, main square, that's a good place to go. And you mentioned a nice stew and perhaps a horn of ale. Indeed, people are gathering in the square. And is large. Uh, there's some mongrel dogs that take off, but a few people come out because it's dark. You see that people are shut up and gone because it's nighttime. Like you see the place is terrified. It's locked down. Shutters are all closed. Like I said, doors locked, people are gone, but there's a few brave souls that come out. I forgot it was nighttime, so I have to amend a few things. It's largely deserted. Um, there's some scruffy mongrels that pick their way through the band and stalls. There's a couple people that came out of this building here, A3. And this is a, it's called, I think I put some of the... Sign of the Wolf Spear? Sign of the Wolf Spear, that's right. And it's... a. Uh, Quite a beautiful building, you know, interlocking, wood framed, like as much many of these buildings are, thatched roof and such. Uh, but you do notice there's a locked strong box that rests atop a short wooden post in the middle of the square. A tattered banner displaying the sable wolf rampant hangs forlornly above the strong box. So mm, right here. Must be their lottery box. Yes. Uh, all the A8s are like craftspeople. And I guess you might not know that at the moment, but it's not a big secret. But the door opens here and a bit of forlorn light spills out. And you see there's a guy there that you, uh, and he's kind of smiling and he's, and he's motioning to you. And he goes, oh, I am Brogan Haverson. And please, please come into my establishment. I wish to thank you for saving my daughter. And well, Greg, oh, it's looking like we get your ale after all. Indeed. He claps Come you on the sir. back. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Yes, well met, sir. Yes, happy to happy to save your daughter's life for a bit of food and a bit of ale. Oh, of course. On the house, on Kaos, you can stay here as long as you wish. I have some rooms, of course, vacant, but a lot of the villagers, they come here to get refuge. And if you guys go inside, you'll see that the place inside is warmly lit by a big fire burning. 
there are a lot of villagers sleeping in corners and stuff and under tables, probably about uh, 20 or 30 um, take refuge in this big stout building. And in numbers, it appears the place is living in fear of this demon beast. So he goes, so you live. This is amazing. You must tell the tale. Come, come. And the place livens up a bit. You also notice that there is the first colorful character you've seen in this place. They're all usually dressed in earth tones and such. But this person has a colorful hat with a feather in it. And he's got a strange instrument that the northerners play. And it's, you wind it up the side. And it has some sort of doodangs and fidgets on the side you press to make it's a different. It's hurdy-gurdy, man. Yeah. Well, I've seen such things. And this is, and he points and he goes, ah, this is Lori, Hirat, soul bard and storyteller. And he turns the thing and he starts playing a song and you, it sounds weird, but he, he, you think he's hitting notes and, uh, and he gives you a wink, this guy, and he bows as he's playing and he walks up and stops and he goes, please, please tell us the tale. Have you seen the creature? It has killed so many, yet you live. Uh, that, uh, that we have seen the creature and we've taken its measure. And I nod yeah. knowingly to Creel. We believe that we have wounded it. Um, but before, before it seemed even the fight began, we, uh, we dealt it some blows that should have taken down any normal creature. It seemed to dissipate into smoke and fly away. So we believe we may have stopped it for a time, but it will return. So we will set out as soon as we can and search for its lair. Make no mistake, we have disabled your creature, but we demand to bring proof back to you, good people. For thus, we must speak with thine Jarl and gather more information as to the layer of such creature, unless you good people here have more information on such. Oh, uh, well, uh, sit, sit, we'll bring you some food and ale, like you said. Warm yourself by the fire, we'll shut the doors and lock them tight. Uh, oh, you must forgive me. You say that you have vanquished and wounded the creature, so we are safe this evening. You are safe. You hear that, people? You are safe this evening. The heroes have banished the creature. It has happened once before. When, uh, what's his name? Led a stout team and uh, ambushed the creature. They took many, many casualties. Is that but Lord? They... What's his name? <laughs> it was actually, and he, his voice goes a bit low. Actually, it was not the Jarl. It was an old timer, one of the guard. He he runs the northern gate. Or pardon mm -hmm. me. I have to look that up again. Well, we will have to go talk to what's his name sometime and learn more. Yeah, indeed. Yeah, we want to uh, get that information. No, it's Nothan the Younger, Master of the Watch. He's not one of the Thanes, apparently. The Seven Thanes. He's Master of the Watch. More militia, maybe. And he runs the night watch, yes. Six six stout men. Man the walls and the gates. You probably met a couple on your way in. Aye, those are good men. Mokul and Naven. Aye, uh, keen eyes. Good sense of character and judgment. Uh, mm. I, uh, uh, Batsu, uh, kind of leans over and whispers into, uh, into Creel's ear, says, uh, what are they saying? Are they happy with us? Or are they mad with us? <laughs> I don't exactly speak the language. Oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, so, sorry, Batsu, I forgot. You see, this uh, this proprietor here, his, uh, his daughter was the woman we saw that was being sent to um, to the creature. So he's, in, he's greatly indebted to us, and he's giving us some food and drink and a place to stay. That's marvelous. Is is there room in the in the in the common room for my rug? Ask him that. I, I, okay, uh, good sir. Um, <laughs> we we would be we would be okay with just your common room this evening. Granted that it will fit um, a very large rug, the size of a king bed. 
And Batsu's uh-huh. out there pacing it out. He's, uh-huh. he's already in there. <laughs> and his eyes go up a bit. He goes, or you may uh, use my study library uh, as well. Or uh, the commons is different. Oh, there's a spot over there as well near the fire, though. Yes, wherever wherever our friend can place his rug, uh, is a is any is he'll he'll call it home. Yeah, Batsu nice. starts laying it out in front of the fire. Then it is particular to him and it his people. A bit. Be be uh, sure not to step on it. <laughs> Whatever you guys do, you'll stick to it if you know what we mean. Lori stops playing for a while as he's been entertaining you, and he's pretty good. You're getting used to the sound. It's this weird northern music, I guess, this northern punk. kind of. But uh, it's catching, I guess. Uh, he plays a bit, and then he kind of joins you, and he starts chatting. He's curious about, you know, your travels, and he's bugging you, and he's very amicable and a nice guy, and he knows a bit, you realize. He's, uh, he's a bit of a traveler, but he's native to this land. He's just a bit colorful, flamboyant. He's got sort of like the, uh, I guess the version, the Gallic sort of colors and such, a big sash. And yeah. he knows some some information. He's willing. He partakes. And you, you, you get talking about the, he's bugging you about the demon and the hound. And he, he they call it the hound. I... Uh, and everybody can, for, to start, everybody can roll D24. As you you talk and you he gives you some information and and the uh, innkeeper so eight so and there's a couple other people around but he kind of mentions apparently the uh, the Arl is working on a plan to defeat the hound we only need to give him time he says and he accomplishes his task uh, but you see the innkeeper roll his eyes when the bard says that his opinion of the Arl has is not impressive. And that mad widow, Imye, is a witch and knows how to trap that hound. That's what I, that's, that's what I hear. That's the innkeeper says that. And Rotsack's eyes, his head jerk around. And he reaches out and his hands reach out to grab him by the neck. Yeah, I, I'll Bard. quick grab that. Because uh, that, that was like his mom's name or something, right? Or his... his great aunt. Yeah, yeah, at least his kin. Yeah, as soon as I hear his kin's name mentioned, I quickly slide my eyes over and uh, yeah, Ooh, I'll, I'll good... quick grab his hand, you know, and, and then and then raise it. This this <laughs> also is a mad. This this was the guy that vanquished the thing, and and uh, yeah, I'll kind of channel his energy a little bit. What do you mean so... by? And he but he does spit out. What do you mean by mad? And the bard looks back. Why, the old, and he doesn't say mad that time. The old widow in me, in me. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Well, good, good friend. In a, in a, in a height of fervor, you yourself looked a bit mad, but you did a good thing tonight. Let's not, let's not forget that. He, he nods. He's cool again. Yeah, that's a good call. You, you, you settle him. I'll, I'll give you a, a, a luck point there, like. Leading one. Well played, well played. Mm-hmm. And I'll lean over to Batsu. It's not going well. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, but he does, Rotsack says in his tongue, you know where there, she is? This Lady Imre, he says in his title purposely. And the bar is like, well, uh, she lives on the edge of the village, of course, uh, out in the, uh, in the wild part in the back. And I'll ping it. In a small uh, hovel, you know, the, 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 the children, the young children go there on dares, and, but nobody else approaches it. They leave her alone. They bring her stuff. And she, she is uh, also a midwife, you could say, of the village, right? So yeah. she is very valued. Cut wife. Yes, indeed. And, uh, and uh, it is important we speak with her. She's considered quite valuable to us. It's important we speak to her about the lair of the creature. We believe she has very important information. Ah, and, and perhaps you are right. She is, it's said, aged well, well beyond her years and knows many things. But be, be warned, 
some come back changed from seeing her on on trivial matters it is said <laughs> this is no trivial matter i think we can all agree and they all look at each other and the, there's a really good mood in the room uh the villagers a lot are awake now but they're all reverently kind of sitting back and they're looking at you guys with, with awe like in heroes and rotsax has his cowl back and he's got his helmet on it's the big you can see where the claw just swatted it harder than hell right and there's big marks on it uh i've also finished some rolls though while we're doing uh go ahead krill i was just going to mention it quick so i've got my cloak wrapped around me um so that nobody can see my bright leotards underneath. I want to want to do my classic Gandalf reveal when the time is right. And I'm standing right beside the fireplace so the ash and the, the cinders don't seem too out of place. Oh, good call, Jim. I'll give you a uh, fleeting luck point. You're getting some of that on my rug. Move away. Exactly. <laughs> You know, yeah, you know, and the more I think about it, that, that helm thing seems like, you know, I haven't taken to it before necessarily, but yeah, where do you get one of those again? Just anybody can wear those, right? Uh, well, this is a pretty structured society, but it, I, yeah, I suppose any warrior type, of course. Uh, there's a smith around. I, I labeled it somewhere. He tells you, yeah, the uh, heel the crane. In the morning, he's got well, he could measure you up and get you a, a nice pot for your head. You yeah, know. that sounds like probably a good idea. Ah, oh, it is good to think, but... And then his eyes go down. Freaking <laughs> shut up. <laughs> uh, oh, fin uh, Bob, give me a roll D24, please. And, okay. and the rest of you can roll another one as well. Not, no hurry, though. I got to go through this one by one. Uh, 13... In the ages past, the savage tribes of this land, which were, I kind of mentioned this, an evil wolf spirit by casting sacrifices into a pit in the sunken fens. Oh, yes, my rug has told me this. <laughs> he picked it up. <laughs> and like, no, don't kill people. Uh, let me think here. 18. The hound will not attack a person of true faith. And... 15. An ancient warlord possessed a magical spear that could slay the hound and a magical shield that could turn away the beast's attacks. Bards call him Ufeanar and say his tomb lies to the north. Oh, that seems promising. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, all these rumors could, they could be false or true, just to rem right. remind you. That, that one was definitely started by the hound. <laughs> That's the hound's lair. He draws Ulf, people there. Check that name out, Ulfeanar. Mm. And when that everyone mentions that's names, there's a bit of a gasp goes around the room. He is known like he would be like you know King Arthur sort of thing to us. Right? Like, what? Everyone like oh, he's been dead for what centuries, man. Mm. Mm. That was like in another age, kind of almost. Or well, I doubt we need any fancy weapons. All we need here is dog's bane. <laughs> as I as I play with uh, my club, my cudgel. Yeah, thankfully, God, I understands what you're saying. Most I was just gonna say, <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> he says while staring into the fire. This guy's completely. I I I think I should have mentioned before, but um, Batsu doesn't have any pants on. I guess, yeah, if you're sitting on your rug. Yeah. <laughs> we have a long oh. shirt on, though, anyway. Well, you know, he, he's, he's stuffed his pants and, you know, in his, <clears throat> about on his lap. Okay, no problem. Yeah, I guess he's on his rug, right? Yeah. Getting a massage. <laughs> uh, have you fed that rug, by the way? Have you been feeding it? He's uh, feeding it right now, centipede style. <laughs> No, I don't. I don't think I, I have. I have no idea what that means. Well, it might eat one of the villagers. Hmm. Be it. Uh, that's okay. <laughs> that's <enough>. <laughs> <laughs> no biggie. <laughs> or better not. Nobody go near that. Nobody go near the rug. <laughs> 
so the evening uh, uh, this takes a couple hours you guys get a good feast they they fet you guys like and bring out some spirits if you want to do some drinking uh oh absolutely you can tie one on a bit if you're anyone short on luck like on their core luck um i'm actually not i guess yeah 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 yeah. i don't know that i want to yeah we don't want to press my luck maybe yeah yeah so uh now you guys can rest for the night you guys are tired You've been going, 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 going. You're at the end of, of uh, you've had combat. You're at the end of a long voyage. You're all exhausted. Um, and you're, you're going to settle down for the night. Yeah, no kidding. I, I don't even know how I made it through that fight. Mm -hmm. And I'll give one more roll as you guys talk a bit more into the night with a few of these people. And uh, that guy does come in in the evening. He comes in at about three in the, in the morning to check on everybody and stuff. And uh, his name was Nathan, the younger, I think his name was. Uh, uh, Nothan, the younger. And he's a stern, hawkish man. And he's sporting a long mustache and fierce eyes. And he's probably 50 winters in age. And uh, he comes in and eyeballs you guys keenly. And he goes, so it is you I hear have wounded, you say, the creature. Did it turn to smoke? He comes up to you and intensely asks, Indeed, we drove it back to its lair. Perhaps you have more information on that. We'd like to finish it uh, and bring back its head. I've wondered where it comes from. So the hound, yes, an evil spirit, eh? And the bartender just seems kind of open. He kind of fills him in kind of what's going on and says, yeah, these guys are so-and-so. And he spends a few minutes talking about it. And this guy nods and he looks at you again with some admiration this time though. And he's so, ah, I'm afraid that the beast will be back. Indeed. Unless, unless we can vanquish it once and for all. Why but did for the... that back to the lair? Indeed. Uh, these sunken fens that we've heard about. Uh, perhaps the creature has its lair near there, if that's where people used to sacrifice to it. Hmm. Ah. Yes, that makes sense. If you say that this creature is a reincarnation of one of these evil demons that has been worshipped, it makes sense. It was probably for some reason from that area, and he's thinking for a moment. Hmm. Okay, everybody roll again. Uh, I just want to 17. Oh, 17. Uh, I myself ambushed the creature. We, at the beginning, uh, we had it. We had nets and we, our, our men, our, he says, we tried to slay it, and, and but it turned to smoke. It slew four of us. And then it came every night after that and slew many until the Yarrow made that demon's deal with it. Every three days, the lottery is pulled and that seems to satiate it. But he goes, you are right. We must destroy it. Hmm. And you say the old lady is your great aunt? He looks at Rotsack. And he nods. He's, he, he never lies, Rotsack, really. He just doesn't know how. <laughs> so he's, uh, he kind of nods. Ah, you do have the look. She is very old. Hmm. She is usually up at night. I see lights in her windows every night. She keeps to herself, though. It is up to you. So you rolled a one. Yeah, yeah so apparently he's... I'm skeptical, but all right, I like this guy doesn't know anything. Yeah, he says the Thane and Jarl and Thane have no idea how to defeat the hound. They have no idea. They they just have been for the last oh two three weeks we've been doing this lottery. Yeah. At least. I look at Creel. And he and he also says that uh, guy, Ulfanar, is an ancient chieftain, 
and his tomb is hidden in the hills north of town. So he goes, that must be in the fens. And he's known as the Savage King and as the Wolf Slayer. So, yes, he has those artifacts. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's a good place to go after we uh, speak to the old uh, lady. Uh, he goes, well, that is uh, your decision. I not, have nothing to do with her. So you may curse you. And I wish you luck. But uh, you can wait till the morning or you can go any time. But you guys are going to rest. Yeah, I, I think that's probably a good idea. Yes, don't worry, Rotsack. We'll see her in the morning. We'll surprise her for breakfast. And he nods and he's tired too. And, and you guys are going to heal some damage and stuff, whatnot. And you, you'll gain back uh, a hit point or luck point per level if you rest. And I'll, I'll say you need about six hours. So you basically, through the, the dead of the night, the, the village actually rests in peace for the first time in a long time. Uh, the villagers still huddle in their huts and so on and, and cower. And the Jarl and his thane and a lot of the villagers are up in that big structure up on the hill. And But the roosters start to crow early, 5 in the morning, 4.35, and the village starts to come to life. And the smoke starts to billow and there's calls and people start to emerge and move around. This gets near and you guys wake up and there's a breakfast served early, 6-ish, uh, 6.30. It's a full light coming out. And uh, Nothan, he comes and sees you again, and now he's going to sleep during the day. Uh, he's been up all night. He says, amazing, you seem to be telling the truth. I went out to the pole. Uh, it was risky. He kind of shudders. Uh, yes. Yeah. And uh, we are grateful to you as well, but I'm afraid the Jarl will be jealous. You must be patient with him, though. He is the Jarl. He kind of gets the stern upper lip a bit and he reaches out with that northern fashion to shake your wrist you know in that viking fashion to each of you and i wish you well you will be welcome at the inn and the, and the innkeeper is back there and he pumps your arms and everybody seems to go around pumping your arm and wants a chance who can as everybody in this building and so on and you guys your stomachs are full it's about six thirty-seven in the morning your things are it seems like a good morning so go for it. Yeah, I, I agree that we get a move on before the Yaro can, uh, can come, come looking for us. What do you guys think? Yeah, it's a good call. We can't make enemies in every single town we go to. It's not, not <laughs> good business. <laughs> not the first day. As you come out <laughs> into the clearing, a strange sight greets you. There is... Uh, just give me one second. You come outside and you see there's a, a priest. He must be a priest. He, he definitely has the priest look. He's got the, the torque and the smock and stuff and a hairdo. In fact, he's a priest of Judicia, which is known in some areas. There isn't a priesthood of Judicia in Lankmar. There actually isn't. But it is known as a religion from the Far East, or so forth. Oh, great. I guess it, it probably has a temple in, yeah, we'll see. It probably has a temple in Lankmar. It's known, and this is a northern branch version. Hey, did I recover any hit points, by the way? Uh, I only need three. Yeah, you get the, yeah, we'll just say for now you got those back. And A4. A4 A4 is that building right to the north there. That is a uh, simple chapel. It's entirely made from stone. It's the only building in Herod that's made from stone. And it has that southern look design. Um, and it's a place of worship and defense, it appears. <clears throat> it's heavily barricaded in some ways. Um, and there were a lot of people, and there, a lot of them are coming out, have come out, and they're going on to their duty. And you guys are a little, little bit late. This is an early, early rising place. Um, and people are coming out cautiously and scurrying off to their work and things like that. Things are trying to get back to normal. But you see that there is a, two guys on their knees in front of the chapel and their, their top is bare and they're whipping themselves with this kind of weird contraption. 
and there's welts and stuff and a few little droplets of blood on their back. And there's a, a guy, uh, he's a thin man. He has a cruel face of a hawk and he's there with the open book in his hand and he's kind of motion going back and forth and he's, he's praying in the book. He's, he's reading out of it in, in an old version of their tongue. And he goes, uh, blessed are those who accept their sins and for those who are doomed or about to die, or we will be there soon and join everybody else. Yes, that is right. And a lot of people are getting down their knees and praying and then getting up and going off. Uh, and then he, he doesn't seem to even notice you really. And it's, it's kind of weird. Look, it gives you the creeps even a bit. And yes, your guy's calling out what you want to do. You can ignore him if you want. He seems to be ignoring you. I, I motion, I say to Batsu and Greco while, uh, Rot sack is out of here. Say, I'd rather take my chances with the uh, the cursing witch. Yeah, indeed. Hi. Indeed. And there was talk also that mentioned last night. There was talk of um uh, a five is a is a, another inn that he kind of talked about with sort of a upturned nose. He's you know he he calls it he called it the rat's den. That inn, and he goes. Ah, it's just a place where the those there's some thieves there hang out. He says low down low. Classic. Yeah, mm. we do no business with thieves. That's right. We wouldn't dare. You hear the ring of the blacksmith start. Hail up ahead. You smell suddenly hops, like kind of sour hops. Like there's somebody. There's a brewer somewhere. You hear people calling out. You hear cows mooing. Um, a few people turn and point and talk and you hear whispers of, you know, it's like, Hey, it's those, it's the prince and his followers or whatever. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm going to quick, uh, Scooby over to the, uh, blacksmith a minute and, uh, get my head measured for one of those demon denters. Okay. Good call. Uh, you go up to him and, and you speak their tongue. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yep. yeah, a big burly it's, master smith, yeah. It's Kvarchish, right, that they're speaking? Right. So I think that's my native language is a man of the eight so cities. Uh, roll a personality check here. Oh, okay. That personality button, yeah. Ah, uh, success. Nice. Uh, he is a, fa a favorable to you you know, and seems very happy. He's heard rumors and he's, he right away, he pulls out this quick contraption and takes him a few seconds and he scurries around the back and he pulls out a helmet. Uh, nice. Okay. Very well. And he's only going to charge, uh, four silver and it's a spookum helmet that has kind of motif of a, of a wolf on it. Okay. And he just says, ah, oh, it's just a little, but not much, just, but it's a, it's a functioning helmet, like Viking type. Yeah. We've probably got that silver somewhere. Oh, I can always spot you the silver if you need dear Prince. Uh, yeah. I got a hole in my pie from the, when we were over at the Safeway and Craig and I were, uh, so what is, uh, so the helm, uh, what's the, base ac on that do we think is it like one or something no it just helps you in crits and stuff oh okay yeah there are helmets that do have powers and stuff but this one is just has that role which is big it just asks yeah oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> or, yeah uh, i'm not gonna put it back that i'm wearing it oh, yeah. but it does what's the drawback with something but oh anyway for the uh I I toss him a gold piece, and in Kvarchich, I say, keep the change. Ah, and you give him a, uh, wow. So you give him what is a rilk? Gold rilk? Yeah. A gold rilk. He look, catches it and looks, and We're it's ballers. a foreign coin, but he sees gold, and he's just eyes go, I, I cannot accept this. No, this is too much. And he goes to hand it back to you. Uh, well, then perhaps you could sharpen my sword a bit here. It's uh, taking a nick or two here. Fighting ah. your 
your beast. And, and he goes, here, hand it to me. And he, he goes to this wicked wheel, and it's it, half of it is in kind of a oil, like a big tub of oil. The wheel's pretty large. It's probably about 15-inch wheel, and it's solid stone. Yeah. And right, and he, he starts turning it, or he has an assist, or actually his feet probably move it, and then he's got uh, a heater going. He's got coals working. He takes your sword and puts it in the coals, and mm -hmm. he goes to work on this thing and starts buffing it. And he says, it'll be a while, uh, probably about 20 minutes. So you guys have a, a few moments if you just want to look around real quick. Sure. Um, let's have a look here. So you're at this part of the village, or, or no, you're, pardon me. You're in the main part still. Now you see the father guy has stopped his benediction and he claps the, the book closed. You see him off in the distance. You know, he's 100 feet away or, or a bit more. And the, the two acolytes get up and they put their cloaks back on and kind of wince a bit, but they're very stoic. And they, he blesses them and then they they go back into the chapel uh, as and he starts preaching to people and seems to be just kind of saying, come repent and tonight the beast will be here for your souls. Who knows who's next? We must hold a lottery soon. And you know, and you guys hear that as you walk away, sort of. And he's this blacksmith going, and you start to see your sword. You start to see veins of steel coming out in it, as this oil does its magic. Like like in Damascus, as they say. Oh yeah, and he's like, hmm, this is a good blade. Where did you get this? He's talking as he's working. Now, anyone else want to do anything for a little bit, or you can just watch this master at his job. Uh, where was um. Pepper? I Pepper. Yeah. What's the other guy's name? I forgot his Zach. name. Rodzak. Rodzak. Where is he? Is he there with is. us? Um. Maybe maybe he can come with me and talk to the guy. I I, I just want to make sure my rug is put up before we leave. Oh shit. <laughs> I don't want anyone getting killed. This guy gives you a room. And he's like, no no, I insist. You he gives you a room up in the corner, and. He opens the shutters for the day, and it's a nice, pleasant room. And there's uh, like f three beds in there and space. It's a big room. Okay. And uh, Rug goes in there then. Yeah. And he says, I will watch. I will watch the room. Uh, nobody will go in, I assure you. No touch. No touchy rug. Do not touch. <laughs> yeah, you're trying to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you picked I, up I some read. words. I reiterate the point. I'm like, yeah, yeah, no, that's. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I don't have anything to do. I can't talk with any of these people. Okay, give me a moment here. Uh, I have to look something up here because that sword, he's doing something to it. He's adding some uh, sprinkles of, you're not sure, <laughs> and, and buffing that into the the weapon itself. And that's what's bringing out this these the inner character of it. Oh, well, that's a hell of a thing. This guy, uh, and he's just working it, working it. Does it have a name? I it does. It's known as Shivers. As it gives its foe shivers once they see it pulled from the scabbard. Ah. Then we shall work it as such. And he takes a certain elements out. Is are you sure? Oh, I am sure. Okay, the sword now is imbued with some power. Oh, you don't say. It's a yeah. It's a plus one weapon, generally. And it does three additional hit points damage against any fire-based creature. Oh. Okay. It's plus two against any fire-based creature. As it and it gives off like a cold. There's a subtle little, you know what I mean? When you pull something out of the freezer, a little mist comes off it. Just, just a little bit. Oh, okay. So it has, uh, yeah, it has the blue tinge of the north to it. Yeah. Good luck. The rumor is that. 
You will save the village. And he nods, giving you the blade and giving you your helmet. To... And he goes, you have a wizard with you. That is good. No, That's we don't. Handy. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, pardon me, you're incognito. So, Indeed, I, I'm only a grand vizier. Kind of waiting, and Rotsack's a bit nervously waiting, and he's like, ah, well, are you ready? Or it's your call, I suppose. We are going to see your aunt, aren't we, Rotsack? That is so. I'm not sure if all of us should perhaps... And Pepper's like, I'll wait outside. Yeah, I'll wait outside with Pepper. <laughs> I'll go in. Uh, Rotsax kind of <laughs> looks at Batsu. He's like, oh, uh, we might need your help. <laughs> but you're like, eh, yeah. Yeah. Uh. Wait, I'll be right behind you. <laughs> hey, the other Gryco you're going, I guess. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Hey, I, so I know what uh, granny witches are like from the north. As a man of the eight cities. Sure, there, I have one or two. Yeah, um, yeah, they're definitely in the line. All right, give me a moment. Let's take a short break, everyone. We're at about uh, yeah, an hour and 20 minutes or so. Uh, we, we're going two to three hours, hopefully, and if everyone's okay. Oh, uh, yeah and push it a minute a minute or two because there's there's a cool part and you guys have definitely know what you're doing now and i'll just refill my coffee i'll be the judge of that that's <laughs> yeah i'll be back in a minute as well uh, yeah. I am back. As am I. All right. I don't know. Were you guys interested in that tomb thing? That sounded cool. Yeah. Oh, the I tomb. Mean, we should definitely go there. Yeah, I agree. I, I almost wonder if it's on the way to the wolf slayer. Yeah, they, he said it was in the fens. Yeah, he said it. Yeah, it was in the area for sure. I right. think that we should stop there because, yeah, even if there's a chance we can get something that'll help us, I think that'd be good. Spear and magic helmet. Yeah, I'd yeah. be good with uh, letting uh, Rotsack have that. That might bring back his honor or something. You know, he seems like a good guy. Yeah, indeed. Yeah. I, I can't give my pale blue blade up. It's got magic yeah, sparkles sick. now. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was easy, huh? <laughs> <That's>, yeah. <laughs> It's nice when you fall into something. All right. 
that's what I've enjoyed about these Lank Marie's adventures. They really are like the book. Like, you know, you just fall into stuff and fall out of stuff. Yeah, I, I love it. Mm -hmm. No, this is a really fun system. Yeah. Yeah, DCC <laughs> has really done a good job. Mm -hmm. have, you, have you guys read the novels, the Fritz Lieber books? I've, I've read... read just a couple short stories actually okay yeah i've only read the first part of the first book or um well some collection of short stories yeah, yeah i mean I had... they're, yeah they're kind of similar to each mm -hmm. other but... mm -hmm. yeah i had uh the series um that l sprague de camp actually compiled back in the day i think it's like sword and sorcery warlocks and warriors that yeah. kind of thing and mm -hmm. that, that was my first introduction to uh yeah, Lankmar. I think it was the Bazaar of the Bazaar. <laughs> was the first one I read. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, that's just hilarious. That 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 whole story sounds like something that we'd all get into for sure. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah, it's a very good yeah, it's a very good setting for uh, I think our style of play. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I appreciate the fact. Yeah, it's been great playing with you guys. Um yeah, I, I really look forward to these nights and it, yeah. and yeah, b both you guys really do some heavy lifting on the role playing and I really appreciate it. Yeah, I love, oh, yeah. love it. Oh, and it's uh yeah, really good playing with you guys. It's a, I, I feel like we got a lot of good banter going and yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, I like these guys. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I would hang out with these guys. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know about that. I don't know if I'd go that far. <laughs> so I wouldn't good. go out. I wouldn't go out for a night on the town with these guys. <laughs> I mean, I Especially wouldn't be shot because he would kill you afterwards. You know, yeah. he'd pick out your eyes afterwards. <laughs> uh, go on. For sure, you don't want to. Yeah, you don't want to do shots with him. Yeah. <laughs> a couple of beers and right. uh, yeah, and you take your beer to the restroom when you go. Right. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Oh, like if there's a couple of guys who might may or may not roof you for some reason yeah it'd be so. creel and batsu for sure yeah batsu'd put some mind altering drug in <laughs> on your cocktail yeah but it would be a legendary time oh damn yeah. i need some more of that shit too now that, you now that i mention it then you wake up with a little green girl <laughs> that only you can see yeah oh yeah I'm like the duke's mistress's lover i just remembered that. oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i forgot about that <laughs> yeah there's all this stuff yeah you, you forget about that we've done i'm i'm just glad yeah you remembered pepper oh yeah pepper yeah and pepper huh I find that too. Sometimes when I DM, it's kind of hard to remember all the NPCs that are tagging along. Yeah. Every yeah. once in a while, it's like, oh yeah, they should have been here for the last three rounds of combat. <laughs> yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know that. Well, I, I just love the fact that she double crosses us, then we just meet her again, and we're like, eh, yeah, hard yeah, yeah. Like really, there really was a night. Even that <laughs> night, I felt that way. I was like, yeah, eh, okay, well, sure, yeah, sure. easy yeah. come, easy yeah. go. That's the Knights of Lankmar. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just a couple of young guys getting into some stuff. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong. All right, gentlemen. So the three of you, four of you, five or, fi or five of us, if you're, we're including Pepper. Now, how close? You stay pretty close, Batsu, or do you go somewhere in the village? Um. Yeah, I hang out with just wherever Pepper stays. You know, right outside, or if she goes, I'll follow. Yeah, Pepper's kind of like just sh shrugs at you and is like, "Well," uh, and she she's kind of gets she gives you a bit of a, a wink and then she starts to creep up to the the hut, but she waits until they go in. Okay, yeah, and I'll... then she creeps up to like eavesdrop. Oh, well, no point of that. <laughs> what they're saying, <It's> like <laughs> you stay away. Yeah, I stay away. Huddled in the shadows of the Jarl's Great Hall, the home of the mad widow Yimye, Imye seems a world apart from the rest of Hirat. 
No one visits the lowly hovel and see young boys testing their courage on moonlit nights. And it's regarded as common knowledge that Widow Omni is a witch and that she will place a curse upon anyone who dares to cross her. Um, you, the door is unlocked. Uh, well, actually, what do you do? You go, you go up to the door. Yeah, well, yeah. And, and just before that, I mean, we make sure that Rodsack makes himself presentable. And, uh, you know, in, in maybe quick familiarity with his customs, uh, we are greeting his uh, elder kin, after all. And True. I want to make a respectable uh, presence. Yeah, and uh, probably full feared and reviled by the villagers. Uh, so, yeah, and so yeah, he kind of pulls his messy hair back and puts his helmet. You know, tries to neaten up a bit. Takes his indeed, back smarten and, yourself up a bit, man. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. And he goes, all right, then in we go. And he he goes up to the door, and just before he the door opens on its own, just before he knocks. It's the old kind of classic thing. And he looks at you guys. Ooh. Creaky and, door. And you hear a kind of a laughter. <laughs> yeah. And, and in Lank Marion, you hear, come in, come in. Heroes of her lot, come in. And he goes, he walks in and you follow him into this, into uh, this hovel. But the interior seems oddly larger than its exterior. You know, that classic thing. And there's a lovely fire, burns in a fire pit in the center of the floor, and a mottled cat sleeps atop a shelf laden with unrecognizable bits of dried animals. Um, the widow sits with a spindle and, and distaff, spinning flames from the fire into golden threads. And it's you're just tripping out as you see, like she's pulling bits of fire into these golden oh, threads. Oh, yeah, indeed. Indeed, and, and I'll... Uh... Um, bow and uh, greetings and salutations, Lady Amaya. Ah, and she stops spinning, and expertly, her fans look pretty quick. And she's bent over, and I should share a picture of this the old crone. Uh, quite a looker. I don't know if you can make that out. Oh, yeah. oh yeah. yes, I can see the resemblance. <laughs> <laughs> so great, 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 great niece, nephew. Come forward. I thought our bloodline was lost with me. Oh, we are cursed. You'd best leave this place. He's like, great aunt, my friends here, we seek to help the village. Please, uh, can you aid us? You know much, and you know much of the old tales. Oh. She looks at the others. What do your friends have to say? And Rotsack introduces you all one by one, and she, she just nods at each of you with these kind of cataract eyes. And uh, so, speak. Sit back, nephew. Let the foreigners explain this to me. We came at the behest of our friend Rotsack because uh, after traveling with him for a long time, we learned uh, even just a fraction of the story of your family. And we would like to help restore yours and Rotsack's name. When we first encountered the demon, we uh, managed to attack it to the point where it seemed to turn to smoke and fly away back to its lair. And after uh. a night of uh, in the tavern, we've We've heard a few rumors that we aren't sure if they're true, but we've heard of a great old king, Ulfeanar, and we believe that he may have some relics within his tomb that may help us defeat the monster. Yes. <laughs> you were wise and learned much. Ah, the old king, they're a ruthless bunch, but Ulfeanar, he fought back. He, he was a demon slayer. Yes, to the north, there is his tomb. It's the shape of a writhing snake, a large mound. At its head is the entrance. Someone here can show you the way, I'm sure. It is the old ancient snake mound. Nobody goes near it. Also this. I will aid you. In another thing, I know how the beast may be slain. 
And how is that? First, I have a favor. And she smiles faintly. Pray tell. I am lonely. I wish to be married. Batsu? And one Indeed, of you must she's... marry me. We we class Batsu on the back and he's, he's not just there. Kind of... <laughs> yeah. Oh damn it. <laughs> Sorry That's guys. I asked. Are you sure, Batsu? I slipped out of this one. And now of course Rotsack, she doesn't look at. She looks at Creel and she goes, So you wish my help, you must marry me and come back. And if you do not her voice, her face kind of goes dark and, and cruel. If not, you were with her. Let me just speak to my fa- friend Gryco for a moment, uh, and we shall decide who best shall take your fair hand in marriage. I quickly <laughs> move to a corner of the small hut. I go, Hurry, I am lonely. <laughs> Won't be a minute, darling. And I quickly took Greg. <laughs> <to Greco. laughs> well, that settles it. <laughs> man, That's man, Greg, 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 so. I, I, I've got a girlfriend back home, man. Like, I, I don't know if I should be doing this. Uh, well, she's just a mistress back there, right? She's probably comfortable staying in that position. I so, see. Okay, yeah, you, you didn't, you didn't leap to. <laughs> you could always oh, have Jamie. a side piece, man. Uh, all right. Well, I'm sure you know new experiences. I uh, I turn around and I say, uh, <laughs> "Woman, I will marry you." Oh, is it and I, and, so? And, and, and this is the moment I unveil myself. I do my it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna give yeah. you two fleeting luck points. <laughs> Her eyes kind of clear. The cataracts seem to. <laughs> Go away somewhat. You and shattered the cataracts out of her eyes. Some ear some years kind of go away and you see, you know, this might have been a bit of act or whatever, but she kinda her neck strains a little bit. She goes, Ah, you you will slay this beast and come back and we will be married. You will see. And she reaches Indeed. over and she was making something on that loom. And she holds it up. Air lingerie, and, it's, and it it suddenly your eyes, even in the just from the firelight, glitter off this friggin' suit of golden mail, Ooh. and it's woven from the threads of flame, and it's sure. so fine, it's like it's like a wool shirt, like fleece. <clears throat> Whoa! But she, it's she, it's smooth, uh, and she goes, ah, this. You will take. It is fine enough to be worn beneath common clothes, though not armor. Of an ass fleece. The sh- and it serves. It's plus one chainmail. And it gives you plus two bonus to saving throws against cold based effects. That's not too bad. So, my groom, take this as a token of. Uh, my our wedding gift i will see you soon go north along the river and branch off there is a valley that goes into the vein the the marshes there you will find this serpent mound as i go as i uh as i go to leave i i kiss her hand and i say until then oh she giggles a little bit (laughs) my man's got his moves yeah (laughs) smooth Oh, and you hit the game. Don't hate the player. You see Pepper quickly kind of slip away from the window and mm, do, 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 just look off a bit. And and she kind of giggles at and looks at Creel as you come out and the rest of you emerge. And Rotsack didn't say much, but he's like, oh, yes. He looks around the village and looks at Creel. Now, Creel, you can put that robe on underneath your clothing. Absolutely. But it is, uh, yeah, but it is chain mail, though. Oh, yeah, and it won't you, work with spells, right? No, you, you, can just, also you get minus your, your skill <sighs> uh, penalty on your rolls if you wear it. That's right. Okay, let me see chain mail. Ooh, oh, yeah, no, that's too much. That's too much for a wizard. Um, 
Uh, okay. I, uh, I, I hold it up and I say the, this plan falls upon to be successful. I, I believe it'd be best if I let one of you wear this chain mail, my wife to be gave this to me. And though I'm sure <laughs> she would like me to wear it, I would, uh, it would work best on one of you fighter folk. Yeah, are you gonna keep it in the family there and give it to Rodsack? I mean, he is your like great nephew now. It's wicked what armor. Do... Rodsack, would you would you wear this? Yeah, he could put it under his clothing and such if he wanted to. Perfect. What is this about the wife, sir? Uh, I thought you were just talking uh, to the old uh, hag. You watch your mouth. I'm bad to kind of like take the surprise at that. Oh, okay, jeez. <laughs> Bad soup, Pepper. I'll I'll talk to you guys as we're walking back, and. Uh, yeah, I, I and I, I I keep a bit of distance from Rotsack. I I I I got to talk to him at one point, man to man. But this is I don't <laughs> want to jump him and with, with all these people around. Say Batsu first. Would you be my best man at my wedding? Of of course, no other. Well, perfect. Second, Rotsack. I'm, I'm standing there. right here. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Could Rotsack, Rotsack be a I, flower girl? Uh, I, I, I can't see. Why not? Now, remember, you got some abilities with Rizuli. Remember, there was some stuff happened, went down. Sort of. <laughs> yeah, I'm like. And sorry. Sorry. And Darren, what ahead, is what is the old woman's name? I'll just write this down. Her name is spelled Y M A E. Ime. Okay. Mad widow. Ime. I gotta stop saying that about my wife, Darren. <laughs> yeah. that's, that's, that's what she's known as. <laughs> sort of a title in this village. Uh, okay, yeah, you'll yeah. start slapping people. Uh, so, so you guys are gonna yes. head out. Indeed, and I tell, tell Batsu, Batsu, um, Ime has reached a point in her life where she wants to settle down, and she wanted me more than she wanted Grico, and that's all it is. I hope to bring some good moments to an old woman's uh, golden years. Mm, well, it appears that you have surprised me. You do have a a good heart in you, after all. On the surface, it may seem like that. <laughs> <laughs> Don't take advantage of this old woman. Oh, no, of course not. Or her 50 cats, which I'm sure are lurking about. <laughs> Uh, do you plan on he leaving the village? Do you want to check out more things? You have, you've gone into a couple places. You have a definite plan and such, so mm -hmm. your call. Um, Maybe we should... Uh, she gave us kind of directions to find the, the mound. Yeah. Yeah, okay. indeed. The Writhing Snake Tomb. And so in DC fashion, if uh, we leave the village, there is... You guys are heading down through the main square. Is that the way you want to go? You see it's filled up, but there's quite a few people there and whatnot. It's only about probably 8, 7.30, 8 in the morning, and you guys want to get going. She mentioned it takes probably about uh, five hours to reach the mound. Well, yeah, hmm. we better howl out then. Indeed, but we should maybe also tell them not to hold the lottery. I, I figure that we may be able to, uh, you know, get the relics and then storm the uh the lair but i don't want to risk another innocent person being slain was well, there yeah. three days between lotteries though there is the thane here though he comes uh out of the chapel yeah with damn it, the father's with him avoid. and there's the jarl uh he's a big imposing man big black beard big girth and he comes out and ah so i've heard i've heard Ah, in danger. So oh, the beast will be back. You see, you'll see. We will hold a lottery. At we will hold a lottery this afternoon. Your names will be in it. Mark you, your names too. We are going to slay the creature. And his eyes bug out a bit. 
Well, then good luck with that. Regardless, we will draw names. And Make sure mine it. gets drawn. <laughs> Any? Uh, He's tribute. <laughs> nice. I <vol> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Agree then. He said it. I, I volunteer. Yeah, I, I will sacrifice myself if we cannot do this task. But right before your wedding day, you cannot do this. Wow, you're racking up the fleeting luck points. You get another fleeting luck, and he's like, "Ah, your word then. You'll be back at dawn or dusk." I Indeed. be back with proof of a slain creature. Just in time for my bachelor party. I flick my shades down. <laughs> he goes, "Perhaps your friend stays, and Pepper, it's a is gonna stay." The village. Yeah, yeah. Somehow she volunteered before he asked. How <laughs> she comes <laughs> forward? I ain't going to this mound. <laughs> Keep your mound. And uh, but Rotsack's like, he steps forward. I'm Rotsack of Clan Black Bear, and I'm here to claim my rightful place. And the <gasps> there's a gasp goes around the crowd. By the trial jowl. of combat. And slaying of demon. Oh, anyway, even two of them go at her right now. And that, actually, they, they do that stuff. But Rotsack is like, we will slay this creature and come back. And there we'll see what the people say. And if you say otherwise, you and me will have words. And the, the jarl bristles and his, his men kind of look un, uncomfortable and look back and forth. And the villagers look uncomfortable. And there's like, ooh, gas. Some look excited. And then, but Rotsack, he puts his cloak back up and nods at you, you guys. Friends, I appreciate this. If it works out well and we live, you always have the gratitude of this village and myself. I may have found a home here. Almost a tear <laughs> in his and eye. I, and, I, and I go up kind of dwarfed in the image of Rotsack and I clasp a hand on his shoulder and I say, yes, we may have found a home here. Are we ready? <clears throat> um, just one more thing before we run out, and I'll just run quick into the the tavern, and I'll uh, I'll pay for a, a a jug of wine to bring along with us to uh, <clears throat> get our spirits up, our courage, some liquid courage. I'll I'll purchase. Mm. Indeed, alcohol guts the best kind. And you guys head out. And there's some people cheer and, and yeah, and the, the watch at the gate is gives you a grin and they're like, yeah, we're, we're rooting for you. And then the jar all gives them a snarl and they kind of look away. And, uh, you head out of the village and turn as they give you instructions to follow these sort of trails that head into this valley to the north. And they say, once you go to the valley, take the left fork of the valley and it'll open up into this large sort of fen area of marshes. And it's pretty well due north. Uh, you will find it, and I actually have a map, but uh, let me just double check here. I'll give you guys, I know, actually, I can show you most of this map. Anybody want to get anything, uh, get anything at the village before you go? I, like I this... mean, yeah, some food for the day, I think, um, and water, wine skin. Mm -hmm. uh, bug spray. Spray. Curious if we've uh, racked up any experience these last couple sessions. I'm just very close to going over. Oh, I see. Uh, yeah, I guess. Well, we took a we took a break there. I could give everybody would probably get a boat. Well, for repelling the creature and saving the girl and so on, I'll give everybody twelve XP. Oh, my lord. That's not enough. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, I'm three experience points away. <laughs> it's coming. Oh, it's I fourth know. level? Yeah. Oh, wow. So uh, let me bring you to this map. That's, that's, yeah, that's impressive. So... Hirat, 
is down here. This is the stone where they sacrificed or were sacrificing people. And you guys are here. They said, oh, go to the river. And then when you go to the river, uh, well, I guess whatever, you head to this big, heavily forested area and things become a bit dark and gloomy. There seems to be some... This area is supposedly... There's... That might be where the sunken fens could be in that area where the creature mm -hmm. dwells. But this is the tomb of Ulthanar, of course, up there. I, the giant writhing snake. It yeah. does indeed look like one. Uh huh. And I shall prep myself quickly here. The forest breaks at the edge of a steep slope, revealing a narrow vale below. Set in the center is a uh, of the valley is a large earthen mound topped with tall grass and shaped like a long serpent. Uh, so you guys are right there, and it's about uh, 200 yards away. Each square is about 100 yards. So you can see, oh yeah, oh definitely. And you're a bit uh, raised above because it's in the bottom of sort of a bowl valley extending away. And, and so you can actually, yeah, you can see this vague shape through the mist going off. And it's, hmm, Rotsack looks at you guys and uh, as you get closer to the mound, I'm assuming you're going to move up to it. Uh, indeed, yes. Uh, yeah, I'll put a hand on, uh, on Rotsack's shoulder and uh, this is it. In this is go. where you become a man. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, <laughs> thanks, Dad. <laughs> Sorry, not your real this, dad. This is probably as, yeah. This is probably for real to say. As you descend into <laughs> this valley, um, actually, give me one moment. You see that there are two slender streams that encircle. Well, maybe one, I guess, but it, it encircles the whole mound. Uh, and it pools at the mouth of the head, the snout. Um, two silvery streams cascade down either side of the serpentine hillock, joining to form a shallow, glittering pool at the head of enormous mound. Across the pool, set into the earthen mound, is a large circular stone decorated with serpentine spirals, spirals worn by time. And I'll show you another section of map. Oops. That's the one I want. Mm. <clears throat> um, so to the right, you'll notice it just, yeah, you can see that the streams go around and the forest, of course, this. Is it perfectly to scale, but pretty close or whatever. The stream is probably 60 feet wide, 40 feet across to the door. Um, if, are you guys uh, seeing this? I should actually. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, indeed. Um, and we see a little square equals five feet. Yeah. Okay, there you go. Now is, there's not much of like a path through the this water, right? No, not at all. Uh, and there's mm -hmm. a little stream feeds it, and the two come around from the northwest and northeast. And uh, yeah, I so wave this... my hand. I wave Sorry. my hand over the water and the door, and I say, "Old Feanor." Well, it was worth a shot. Yeah, there's a frog. <laughs> <laughs> cricket, cricket goes forlornly. Uh, so you guys are about here. You followed the natural lie of the valley, kind of tapered down, and then there's this, yeah. Mm. Yeah, so the streams kind of flow into C1 and then slowly trickle out 
Okay. Um, uh, well, I mean, there's some trees, so I can uh, grab an errant uh, old limb of some kind and just yeah. give a poke to the stream to see how deep it is and such. And it doesn't look deep, and it doesn't turn out that it is deep near the shore. Uh, probably it, it bottoms into kind of the mucky bottom after not a foot, 15 inches tops, and seems to be level as you reach out. You, you got a stick maybe, I'll say it's a foot. You got like a 15-foot kind of crooked stick, but it was ample. Uh, you could reach out and tell that after even 10, 12 feet in, it seems to be level at about foot to 15 inches deep kind of mucky and covered on the top with like uh, mosses and and lichens and stuff and you lift up the stick and there's like slime at the bottom it's like yeah not surprisingly uh, i'll go up to about this point and uh where it's you know looks like it'd be 15 feet across and uh try to pick my way slowly stepping on you know the thickest bits of moss yeah, yeah, and that's yeah. I mean, that's sort of where I would uh, kind of plan to do that, where it, where Jim had pinged and poke along there. Okay, let me set it up real quick. I'll get to your uh, things. Oh, that's the wrong button. Okay, there we go. And then you guys can show me. excellent yeah there we go so we'll assume we're starting here you were poking it with your stick and then you're like okay so you guys oh let's go over here and uh i'm gonna expand your sizes a little bit you guys can zoom in if you will oh we're missing mm -hmm. somebody oh ratsack there he is all right so ratsack he's like oh and he's like looking reverently, he lifts his helmet up, you know, the eye holes. And he's looking all wide eyed at the door. Indeed, it is a, a tomb of the ancient king himself, Ufinar. And he clamps down the helmet with a firm gesture and nods at you all. So, uh, thieves, he says, and like good natured, of course. What do you think? As he looks at Batsu. Hmm. I say we try to jump it. If oh. I get the running start, I should be able to. Pole vault. I'll, I'll make the way oh. for you. Gryco with the stick, like you're you're prodding and stuff. Give me a luck check. Okay. Yeah, because uh, I forgot. I was Success. Oh, nice roll. I wonder if that's glitch. That's two that have hit that. Wow. Wow, did you that's, hit that? You, that's you just good luck. That. Okay, I have to double check this. As you, you snag something. Oh, oh. oh yeah. What, what's this? Yeah. Uh, I'll pull it out of the muck. Pull it out of the muck. Okay. It's a appears to be a some sort of hide wrapped bundle, and it was kind of it had been there a long time, and long time because you you pulled it out of the silt and stuff. Uh, there's it's secured with rotting leather straps. It's quite well made and with uh, rusted fittings, metal or some sort of bronze or something. Uh, and it's waterlogged. Uh, it's not, this. Not unexpected. Possibly some previous grave robbers pack. You want to open it? Indeed. All right, so in Rotsack's like, careful, reverently, please. He's kind of makes like a Catholic sign or something. Well, the yeah, northern yeah. Norse well, version. In, in indeed, but this was just found in the river. This now but, give yourself. Uh, we'll take care. And give yourself also a uh, fleeting luck point, Ryko. I'll take that. And Creel, now earlier you were kind of you said something when you got to the pond, right? Yes. Okay. What was that again? You were I had muttered just Alfeanar in a in a Gandalf tone, oh, hoping yeah. that something would happen. I see. Yeah, okay. 
and I don't know, you're starting to think about like, this is something that somebody threw in there, this package, this bundle. And you open it up and it contains a nicked and pitted bronze sword, a handful of tin and bronze coins that are old and from some forgotten time, and a cracked humanoid skull. Okay. Yeah, so uh, so I'll look to Rotsack and pray uh, tell me what this is. Is there Maybe. perhaps a is there perhaps a toll to pay to get in to the tomb? Oh. Rotsack he's green, that's that is possible. This Yes, it is a way the ancestors I would throw offerings. There may be more in there. But I did not yes, you're you're right. Mm, I say we use one of those spikes uh <clears throat> that Graiku has and and hammer it open. <laughs> well what's the need for throwing coin to the waters? Mm, I don't know, Batsu. I feel like this may be one of the times we should maybe give some offerings and toss it into the river and see what happens. I don't normally desecrate such a situation right next to, you know, this guy. <laughs> I'll check on this stone. Um, so I will take a gold coin um, and... Uh, that's my contribution. <laughs> so you still have this package you opened, and you mm -hmm. can close it again or keep it to to will with the contents, the cracked skull, pitted, and well, the sword is useless and rotted, rusted. Um, oh, we can at least throw the coins back in, right? For uh, Batsu will palm the coins while I wrap it back up and. Put it back to its right, right restful place. Yes, but with a gold coin added in. Yeah. Oh, okay. So we'll make this. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, we'll, that's what I'm saying. We'll reconsecrate the sacrifice. All right. Fair <laughs> yeah. enough. Yeah. Okay. Rotsack is going to. Well, actually, Jim, I'm going to let you roll because you've been, you've kind of figured it out in a way. Rotsack's going to contribute but he's going to take something special mm -hmm. and put it in there. I'm just looking to see if he has anything special. I've been writing a few things down for him, but... If it's afraid. his foreskin, I'm leaving. <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> yeah, it's not that kind of place up here. <laughs> oh, yeah, he has the Vorpal effect for his mighty deed. Delim or decapitate. <laughs> it's pretty simple. Um, Sick. He is going to leave his sword... Is named sword. Whoa. Yeah. He has a backup battle axe, but that's his. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> he did, does it's written here. <laughs> backup weapon, battle axe. Okay. Yeah. But he has, that's his sword. Uh, I, I don't have a name. <laughs> I feel stupid. No, this is Frostbrand, he says. And he puts it in the package. Yeah, well, if he gets old Feanor's spear and shield, then who cares? Kind of small sacrifice. Yeah, you put it that way. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, no kidding. <laughs> if, you, if that's agreed. But for the moment, everyone's like, oh, you don't feel like you have to take your hat off or something. Um, oh, and oh, and I do, too. And, and then I put my uh, hand on his shoulder again, and then I noticed that Creel has already done that on his other shoulder. Mm-hmm. And then, and then I, Creel and I lock eyes, and then we look, quickly look away. <laughs> yes, no, it's, it's awkward. It's getting weird. Um, what I do, I'll throw in another gold piece because I feel like he upped the ante. And uh, I also toss in the only thing from my past life that I carry around. It's some gloves that my mother had. Really? Okay. And so you're going to that's it. Everybody's ready. He, he Rev, uh, Gratsu or Greco, you wrap the bundle up again carefully and you're going to put it back where you found it. 
what you're saying. Indeed. And as you do so, there's sort of a ripple goes through the pond. And uh, a ripple goes through Creel and Rotzak as you gain a permanent luck point. Like on your core luck. Goes up one. Hey. As the Norse gods, it appears, uh, I guess we'd be talking about Odin and guys like that. Yeah, I'll steal it back later. Forward. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> Get it. Yeah. And then you, you lose five luck. Huh? And the rest of you, though, feel like, oh, wow. And, and uh, yeah. Go ahead. Over to the. you going to walk through the water? Yes. I'm, I'm going to try to. <laughs> the old hands and then go across it. <laughs> it's, we're good spirits. All right. So to the door, I'm assuming. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Yeah. All right, this round steel door covered with snake glyphs um, for some reason spiraling outward. What else is... And it appears... Well, you have to check it out. Oh, and this pool is a weird one feet in depth. It has white sand bed flecked with mica that causes the pool to glitter and sparkle. As, and as you cross a pool, there were other bundles. You notice, like, you hit them with your feet. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can ignore them, just keep going, of course, or it's up to yeah. you. Yeah, well, yeah. Batsu, and, uh, Batsu might, um, you know, take one of those as he yeah, no. goes over. And, and Batsu reaches for it. Uh, uh, brother, it'll be uh, much lighter to take it on the way out. <sighs> Uh, it, the Batsu looks like he just got scolded and kind of walks forward. Yeah, you almost, you were doing like the Hobbit and the movie. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah exactly. Plantier. <laughs> and you almost, so you did pardon me, you didn't grab it. Mm, right. No? Mm -mm. Okay. No, uh, he was reaching and. You yeah, got a few goosebumps though. You're like, oh, but maybe not good goosebumps because you kind of got a shiver. So I'm going to give Greiko a, a fleeting luck point. You guys must be getting some fleeting luck points. Uh, nobody's rolled a one yet. We haven't done much. Oh, well, here we go. Yeah. So we're checking out this large door. And it looks heavy enough that it, uh, anyone want to check it out? Yeah. Do I pick up any sort of arcane influence? Any sort of magic writing around? Oh, it's stone. Pardon me. It's a big round stone. Um, yeah, make a roll. You could uh, do an intelligence Sure, because if I if I get the feeling that it is magic, then what I'll do is I'll actually um, I can cast read magic. So I got a twenty. Mm. And he does mm. have a familial connection, albeit through marriage. Now it is connected yeah. to the pool. These ruins, there's uh, speaks of water and some, and you're reading the old because you happen to know their language too. This is so a car a uh, archaic. Pardon me. And it's in runic form, right? But you're you're kind of deciphering it, and you realize that was a good roll, by the way. Ah, the water spirit of the pool will guard the entrance for eternity. It says they have bound bound the spirit in arcane ways. And you, you look back, all of you look back at the pool and kind of shudder a little bit, like. And just a meta game, you guys have dodged a bullet thus far. Uh, <laughs> and. So we must be careful. There is a guardian spirit here, but it is dormant. I fear we have done right. And he looks at Creel with more respect. Creel looks at himself. Yes, as I assumed. Mm -hmm. But we have to just push this side with force, it appears. It rolls to the side. Make a strength check if you want to move it. All right, uh, you you boys stand back. Up to five people can add their strength modifier to somebody's roll. Okay. Um, well, my modifier is minus one, so I don't know if that's maybe I should step back. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna strain yourself. Yeah. Yeah, I think this one is on Graiku and Rotsack. Mm. Yeah. I yeah. step. I step aside. 
Step aside, sir. Step aside. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, is is um, Rodsack making the roll then, and I'll help him? Is that the plan? No, he'll help you. He's plus two, so that you get plus two to your roll. Okay. Every, whatever year. So and it's a high DC check, but. All right. Well, that would be nineteen with his plus two. Ooh, you know, we'll have to. I push. I what I do is I I blow gently towards them and give them a fleeting luck. So that it becomes a twenty. Oh, that's a good job. Okay, it's it slowly moves to the side and groans. Oh, pardon me, that's a twenty-five check. What? <sighs> <sighs> All right. Well, yeah. So I'll blow four more then, and we'll make it. There you go. Fleeting luck. That's what it's for. Yep. Uh, if you rolled a one there, you would have lost all your fleeting luck. Right. Mm -hmm. And yeah, and I'm yeah. just waiting. That'll be the next roll. So this way I come out like like a genius. Freaks to the side. And it's surprisingly fresh air mm -hmm. coming out of the place. Um, the corridor opens to a wider low ceiling chain. Oh, pardon me. Not yet. As you guys look ahead... Um, I'll describe the area of the tomb first. There's no natural light within the tomb. The walls and ceiling are composed of tall stone slabs set in place before the mound was built, right? And then they, they piled sand on it. It's crude in some ways, but pretty solid in others, like just huge stone slabs. The floor is hard pack earth. Here's... The air tends to be cool with beads of condensation forming on the walls. It's very humid. Uh, there is an odor of ink, of old tomb. <laughs> odor, odor. <laughs> Definitely. And do you have any light sources? As the light reaches to that spot and then you can't see further, basically. And who wants to go first? <laughs> well, I'll pull out a torch and stand in the middle of the group. All right, Rotsack has his battle axe ready. And he steps in a few steps into the tomb, and he's poking the ground with his foot, shuffling. And so, Batsu, what do you think? It looks solid. Um, uh, stay back. Let me um scout up ahead. Let me take a look at it. And I want to um I want to kind of sweep the hallway and make sure there aren't any traps. That's what I'm looking for. Okay, go ahead and make a your roll. All right. Got a fine trap here. Yeah, and Ten. it's it's yeah, the, it's all dirt, packed earth. Uh, uh, oh, there was one thing. See, you, you notice, can't do much here. Okay, go ahead. Pardon me, just before, like you, you get down before they could could have been disturbed by the rest of the party. Their floor reveals faint tracks, and strangely, the tracks originate from inside the tomb. And these are recent tracks. Um, and they determine that somebody was trying, you go and they, they go back to the door that you rolled aside and you look at the back of the door and you can see that somebody was trying to claw their way out. I take a look at this gentleman. Hmm. Someone was in here recently trying to get out. Is there any other boulder we could put in the way of the door in case this thing rolls back on its own while we're inside. Hmm. I can spike it. Ah, great idea. Spike All master. Right. You spend a bit of time doing that and no big deal. It only takes a few minutes. But yeah, it, and that gave me an opportunity to take a look at it. So these claw marks, uh, I'll put a couple of spikes on that. Uh, so these claw marks, uh, are they of similar shape and angle as to what I saw on the pole? Mm, good call. And there, uh, make a roll. Um, I got a DC I... number. This would be a uh, intelligence check. Mm -hmm. DC, pardon me. It's dice, dice check, and. Uh... <laughs> Hmm. Doi. Uh... Well, you you they don't look the same, but it's quite pretty messy and 
different material. Mm, yeah. What do you want from me? I'm not a scholar. <laughs> Unless you want to burn luck, of course. But uh, I don't know if I have that much luck. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Got to hold off. So you guys move down the hallway, and Matsu, it seems clear, and there's a room up ahead. Um, the, narrow, the dark, narrow passage is supported by walls of stone slabs. The low ceiling is made of similar slabs, each inscribed with dense spirals. The air is still and cool, and puddles of water have pooled on the hard, packed earthen floor. Um, you come forward. The corridor opens to a wider low ceiling chamber. The stone slab floor slopes down steeply from all four walls, falling away into a dark pit in the center of the chamber. The air is cool and the walls glimmer with condensation. I don't like that. Yeah, we throw ourselves on the spikes. Mm. Maybe it wants another one of your gold coins there, Curio. <laughs> you laugh, but we've made it this far. <laughs> yes, we have. Yeah. So you cut to the edge and you can you hold your light out and you can see like, oh, what's that in the pit? And it's like, yeah, it's dark. It's hard to see what's in there. Uh and it's there's slimy slime around the edges. This Ugh. could be tr tricky. What's that yeah. kind of mutters? I I hold the light down kind of close to the slime, and uh, as I'm sitting there for a second, everybody's kind of like, "What what's this guy doing?" I then reach behind my butt and grab a handful of ash. And I toss it on the slime in front of me and sort of, you know, wipe away a bit of slime, toss down some ash, see if I can make a bit of a footpath. Oh, nice. And, uh, okay, so that's interesting. And then uh, you're going to try to make your way around the sides or down to the center, to the pit? or No, so is it like the dotted lines are the pit? No, actually, that's probably where the, the floor tapers sharply. Yeah, it, starts, mm. it becomes a bowl shape. Uh, I see, I see. Okay, and, so well, yeah, no, it's I... the whole floor. That is a bit of giveaway, and you can see with the light that there is a chamber underneath down that pit. Mm -hmm. And oh. you know, I mean, that's the circular part. Like, I mean, I kind of fudged the map there. Oh, I understand. So the whole room mm. is tapered down to that, that dark pit. <clears throat> I see. Okay. Okay. Um, so then are there like along the walls, are there like little holes where like oil or something could pour forth? There's cracks and stuff all over. Uh, these large stone slabs aren't seamless by any means. Uh, all right. You know what? <clears throat> I'll go across. Does anyone have a rope? Yeah, rope. Like... rope, rope, rope. Yeah, they even bring rope. <laughs> no one ever brings rope, rope into a dungeon. Oh, mm. I know what they do, but I don't have any money and got all my stuff taken away. Oh, I Here. know. It's okay. So you tie a rope to Batsu, and well, somebody grabs it. Yeah, and I want to, um, I want to try to get across. Um, oh. Basically, what Batsu is going to do is he's going to like. He's going to do like some cool move. He's going to slide down and then <laughs> jump off this ledge here and kind of slide into the in, in, in momentum. <laughs> just yeah. go with it. That's mm -hmm. awesome. I, I like it. That's so you put, he pulls out rope just in case. He's like, oh, yeah. okay. And, <laughs> all right. Off I go. And you go for it. And right. Okay. So you have to make a uh, check to see if you keep your footing on the slime and stuff. And this will be a. Uh, reflex save. Okay, I can do that. Sprint across, hit, hit, and so go ahead and make that save. I have the number. On saving throws, we can't give him uh, luck, can we? Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. I'll, I'm, I'm gonna use. I'll use my unluck. I have. I have a bet. It'll, it'll work. Sure. Uh, yeah, you're gonna need some luck because you are gonna wipe out. You can tell. All of a sudden, you slide is way slippier Ooh. than you thought. <laughs> I'm gonna spend three of my luck points. 
Anyone else going to add? Let's now see you what have to roll for those, right? 3D4, yeah. Gotcha. Six, so that's a 12. Eh, I'm okay with that. Um, does it look like he's doing okay still? <laughs> I'm not sure. You see him cartwheeling. <laughs> he's, on okay. his, you know, he's doing the old heel skit. I, Wrong. <laughs> I, I, I then, what I do is I, I see that Rotsack's holding the rope, and I give the rope a bit of a twist. I add three more fleeting luck to bring it up to 15, hopefully kind of setting him up balanced. Okay, and uh, you cartwheeling, and it's not enough. No! Yeah. 15? Well, Dang. It's an 18. Reflex wow, save. okay, damn. Uh, damn, no kidding. And you move quickly and slip towards the hole. Now, Rotsack, or Greco, you have the rope, you have a trance to yard him, and you also, you're cartwheeling, but you wipe out to the side and you slip, and it's the old classic pit, you know, Return of the Jedi, Sarlacc pit, as you slip, and you can try to grab onto the lip as you're going to go into the pit. Yeah, uh, yeah and the, he's going to try to grab slippery, you. Though, right? Yeah, and it's a, you make a reflex save to see if you can grab the, the edge. Okay, I'm the going to do that too. Okay, uh, there's a number here. Okay, that's, okay. Uh, is that your final answer? Yeah, well, I'm I'm really counting on Geico here. All right, so you, you you can see you're trying to grab the edge, and you slip, you don't grab it. But Geico, you make a uh, you make a strength. What is it? A well, I'm not telling you the DC number, but uh, go ahead and make a strength check to see if you can actually prevent him from falling down the, down the pit. I'm sure I can. Yeah, there we go. That's a good roll. Uh, it was another 18 check. Nice. Um, while, I'm, while I'm hanging here, what's down Ugh. here? Can I see? <laughs> yeah, Shine that see. light over here. Come on, give me a better It angle. was close because he stops you short, and it's classic like movie moment, right? Or two, you know, Looney Tunes. He stops <laughs> you about inches from this, these spikes um, that are... The floor of the circular chamber is concave, forming a shallow depression. The ceilings, walls, and floor of the chamber are all covered in slick black LJ and slime. Above a hole is bored with the arch ceiling that you just fell through. Directly beneath the hole, a score of hammered bronze long spears are set into the floor. Like, and you were meant to fall on them and just... <laughs> <laughs> okay, I've had enough of this. Pull me up. And, and are there victims that have been skewered by these spears before? Ooh. Remnants of those yeah. victims? Well, you guys look, look around. You're not down there. Well, well Batsu, can, Batsu, him. can Batsu look? Yeah. Hold on. Don't pull me up yet. <laughs> okay, let me have a quick look here. Okay, from what you can see, and you're, you're kind of, do you have a torch? Um. No, I don't. Krill, can you can you slide the torch down, please? I'll, I promise I'll catch you. There's one guy. <laughs> there's one guy down <laughs> here, Chester Copperpot. Chester I Copperpot. Uh, I'll take out another torch, light it with my first one, like a chain smoker, and then very carefully put it in the algae. I say, well, this might just go out, and I slide it towards Batsu. Yeah, he kind of climbs up, and I'll just assume he grabs it. You know, he reaches up like the side of a pool, <laughs> kind of yeah, grabs yeah, yeah. it. Hey, there's something down here, and he's describing. Oh, there's these spikes, and you, you can actually lower yourself down to the floor and carefully avoid the spikes. You know, kind of oh, stand yeah. in between them and such. And they just cover the area underneath the pit. They're meant, you know, anybody dropping through that slippery hole, like you almost did, and you kind of peed yourself a bit. I believe. Yeah, Raku, lower me down a little bit. Uh, there's something down here. Well, you are roped, yeah, so we can lower you on the rope. There Just don't lose it. Is a pool of dried blood. Oh, okay. And there's bloody tracks leading around a tunnel. And I'll reveal it. Oh, no. That goes around. A, uh, that tunnel's the one that joins the under chamber, if you follow. Yes. Uh, Guys. There's, There's something down here, or used hmm. to be. There's 
there seems to be, yeah, some sets of tracks kind of muddled and mixed together, more than one. The same kind of tracks that I saw earlier? Yes. Hmm. That explains it. Um, is there a way I can pull these spikes out? And there's two, and there's a pair of bloody daggers. I'll pick those up. Are they silver? No. Yeah, well, I'll pick them up anyways. Two daggers. Oh, pardon me. These would be silver. Oh. These are Thieves Guild members. They must have been. Silver North, daggers. Northern branch. That was the question. Nice. No, you're right. So you, you kind of, I assume you kind of yell that up or... Or do you want to stay quiet? Oh, I'll I'll keep my silver quiet, but um, but I'll tell them about the footprints, the 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 prints and whatnot. Mm, okay. But uh, yeah, I want to see if I can't pull these uh, spears out. See if um. Oh. Ah, uh, you can. Appears that it's possible. So yeah, strength checks. You can snap free a spear. Uh, but right. you realize that it's bronze. It's it's a heavy. It, it'll be really heavy, mm -hmm. and it'll be minus probably minus one to damage due to its bluntness. Oh no! I just want to like kind of get them out of the way. So if they wanted to come down here, it'd be a little bit safer. Oh no! That'll take a while and a lot of strength checks. There's okay. like there's like fifty spears. Oh, okay. Is there, any, is, okay, is there anything to tie to? Batsu, and maybe perhaps we can just hold on to the rope and slowly make our way down. Hmm. Um. Yeah. Do the uh do the spears have like a lip? Maybe I can tie it to like uh the bottom of the head of the spear. Sure. You can finagle a rope, and you guys could rappel down. Um. Mm -hmm. If you're careful, uh, we'll make rolls, but I, the DC will be quite low because you're being careful with ropes. Oh um, God. And I'll be there to catch anyone that DC you know, fives if anybody wants to rappel down and join him. And while that's happened, Batsu, you'll discover that those bloody tracks go around the corner and up that hallway. And then there's mm -hmm. a staircase that is uh, goes up and probably oh. joins okay. the well, other hallway. Been... We'll go this way. So it's like, oh, that's handy. So yeah, we make it down. <clears throat> Well, I, do you, he's okay. but I, I, I think the question is, do you even have to go down or can you just walk across? Oh, no, right? the, 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 the place slopes into it. Yeah, believe me, man. I, I tried walking across there. It's really slippery. I wouldn't suggest it. I wouldn't even suggest trying it. You'll fall into the speeds, mate. Mm -hmm. Well, he I tried to sprint across. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, you were trying to like this epic <laughs> handspring thing. Okay, well, it's for fine. brevity's yeah. sake. I'll assume you guys took the, you had the rope, you, you secured it yeah. with a spike, minus the spike, <laughs> and then yeah, and you minus a. Uh, I'll take off roll, another spike. Roll D three to see how many it took to secure the door. Oh, okay. Big, I big, used big two. Door. Can we just go with two at this point? Sure. Uh, we'll go with that. And for brevity's sake, we'll assume that you discovered that this hallway joins and there was this, these bloody tracks that head down the hallway to the north. This direction and, and Creole, you're kind of right here. So you, you can notice you got a torch here holding up and it's like, hmm, yes, the bloody tracks come up these stairs and turn north. Interesting. And then they turn to the left and go down some stairs. Mm -hmm. The map. Okay. Yeah, there we go. And the hallway goes up ahead, and you seem to be getting into the core of this place, the head of this mound. I I kind of say, uh, Rotzak, you 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 and Batsu want to lead the way? I'm getting a little scared. Yeah, yeah, we'll lead the way. And Rotzak, he's like, yes, there could be uh, some of his assistants might be buried in here as well, and such. There might be multiple places and artifacts. Yeah, let me give a listen before we uh, head up. I want to just kind of listen and see if I hear uh, in any of these hallways uh, any noise coming from them. Okay, go for I don't it. Know if that's a, what could I check would that be? Uh, that'd be a, in, I'd, I'd say you could use your agility or intelligence. 
We'll say. Okay. I'll use my agility then. Uh, 12. 15. And it says, uh, Eerie Silence. And... Yeah, no, I, I can't think of anything you would hear down here. It's drips of water. It seems abandoned and eerily quiet. Don't hear anything. Let's move up cautiously. Rotsack leans back. So down these stairs to the right or straight ahead. He, he looks down this hallway. Hmm. Don't, know. Don't recommend going down first thing. Down is generally bad. Well, there's an old trick to getting through mazes. You pick one wall and you follow it the entire time. So let's keep this wall on our right and head down this hallway to the right. See where it leads and then we'll do the top area and then we'll end with the bottom. Good yeah. wisdom. Let's go. Agree. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, he laughs and there's no stairs here. At least we're not going down. Uh, didn't like that. Looks of that. And as you get close to this chamber, you get near the entrance, right? And you look into it with the light in it. Uh, what was that one? Okay. This chamber has partially collapsed, you realize. I'll reveal a bit more. Tall stone slabs that once supported the ceiling are now canted inward by the weight of the earth above and fallen debris is piled in the center of the room. The floor has fallen away in the far corner and it seems as if the entire chamber could collapse with the slightest disturbance. And you, there might be a faint light coming from the back, like, because it's mm. daylight outside still. And so there, this could have... Greco, are you joining us? Oh, yeah, indeed. Mm, this could have, be a, could have been a ulterior uh, entrance. Is getting Ross Axe looking in. We must be careful. Uh, I have a deft touch. Uh, let me uh, look at it first. Make sure it won't collapse on us as soon as we go in. He steps, he steps slightly gingerly into the room a little bit and nothing happens. Uh, let me have a quick look here. Turn over a couple stones, maybe see if uh, see if we can figure out what this room may have been used for. Mm. Yeah, I'll do it once over. All right, Rat Batsu, give me a uh, agility check. Okay. Rotsack will follow you. Yeah, 13. and it's despite its look, it, it is pretty stable. It's been like this for a long time, and it seems caused from erosion maybe the stream and you and uh but rotsack kind of goes toward the edge and he goes hmm i think it leads outside there is a sort of a hole here and you're you're looking through the rocks and you happen to find that uh the debris had kind of buried sort of an altar stone altar table in the center of the chamber um it's partially kind of buried under some debris which ha would have to be removed to check it out further and it has the motif of oh pardon me i'm looking at the wrong one here oh yeah there there it is yeah same sort of thing it does have the a big sort of table altar in the middle of the room that's sort of partially buried and it has sort of lion motif here is carved around it i asked rossack if a lion means anything in the mythology. Hmm. Indeed. He goes, I, a totem spirit, the warrior that was buried here was probably of that totem family. And he, do we wish to look at it in the, and he goes, for this is a, this is hollow. He taps the altar table. There's something hmm. inside, possibly. Do you think that this may be Ulfeanar's grave? Hmm. I know not. 
I'm not sure if this is the main one. That I sense it is further in. Indeed, maybe we shouldn't uh, should not disturb this this resting place. Rodzek, if you know any northern prayer that you could say that might, you know, might be good in this situation. Hmm. Ah, yes, yes, of course. And and yeah, he gives out a bit of a scald, and uh, you're like, oh Jesus! <laughs> it's like, uh, makes a bit of noise and gives out a bit of a prayer chant. Oh, okay, I think that should do. Anyone else want to do anything? No, I suppose we better not uh, molest this place any more than we have to. Mm -hmm. Agreed. But that it's a possible way out if we need. Bye. So Bye. we go out here and head to the right. Back to me, yep. Rot sacks with you. And going, going. Now, as uh, you do come around the corner, there are two creatures come up the stairs. Whoa. From here and attack you and they are appear to be humans at one time something has happened to them they kind of seem to have their skin and their outer skin is gray and looks dead and there seems to be movement underneath it that is more than muscle and sinew and their eyes aren't there they're kind of rolled up in the back of their head and they're they move forward quickly much and uh, with terror you realize what sort of animated things these could be possibly are undead you've heard of these two creatures i have to where did i put them again oh here they are Okay, so you spin around and oh, you gods, be warned. And these, these things move super fast and move quickly at you guys. Uh, give me one moment. They came from those stairs. Okay, so we roll initiative. Let me get the doodad. Out and. All right. Did. So I'm rolling for uh Jeez. Both these creatures share the same role. Oh. Actually there's two of them. I'll roll twice. Them. A 6 and a 2 and their initiative is actually oh plus 1. So a 7 and a 2. Okay. Not too bad. Not too bad. <laughs> so they're not the quickest. Oh, there's also Rot Sack. Uh, of course. And he's plus. Oh, pardon me. Well, two. Yeah, actually, he rolls d16 because he has a, that battle axe. Is uh, two handed, but anyway, he rolls it too. Uh, where did I put him? Oh, pardon me, guys. A long day. Uh, but he's plus. All right, almost ready. Everyone got your moves ready, what you want to do? Uh, we start with Greco, who spins around, happens to be near the back, and there's one of these things lurches well toward the group, or both of them. We'll see who they attack. I make rolls, 1d4. Let's keep it straight up, random. Who knows? Here go. All right. Well, <clears throat> it'll be a quick matter to uh, take the thing's head off, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. yeah it um, creeps you out, this thing. Ugh. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I think it, we'll just go for that with the quick decapitation. Okay. Just trying to go for max. Okay. Indeed. I didn't get a decapitation out of that. Uh, and a 12 total. Uh, I got a point of fleeting luck. I'll throw it to that. All right. 
And that will hit. Nice. And your damage is, oh, eight plus one. Wow, wicked roll. Yeah, I got the damage on it. Got it, okay. Might cut his head off anyways. <laughs> yeah. Pretty nice roll. Uh, that is a good roll. And you damaged it, uh, but you didn't get the deed, so you didn't do any extra damage or anything. And you right. do cleave its neck heavily, and it kind of goes to the side, and you see things swirling underneath through the wound. He doesn't bleed or anything. It's creepy. Okay. Uh, real. All right. I heroically uh, step back from combat behind okay. everybody, but I quickly pull out my mirrors and uh, with my, you know, oh, actually, I'm holding a torch. I'm going to gently place the torch behind me, either in some sort of sconce if there is one hit readily available, or just, you know, to the side of the wall. All right. Uh, and then, can I cast a spell this round as well? Sure, yeah. All right, I cast Strength on Rotsack again by doing my same Richard Simmons dance moves with the mirrors, oh, okay. catching the torch light. <laughs> Excellent. And, uh, yes, I say, this won't hurt a bit. Ooh, <laughs> stand, that's right. Stand very I, still. Just, yeah. Um, Oh, okay. Hmm. That's a, that might give him some pop. Yeah. Okay. Here, I'll I'll do this one because I want to see how this goes. So, uh, he gets strength of twenty. So that's a plus four bonus, and it lasts for this many turns. A single turn. Oh. Ten minutes. Ten minutes. Yeah. Roughly. Well, that's better than nothing. I'll set the timer, sort of, because we're in combat. So we'll see how long we can let this rip. Uh, so he's like, and his muscles become toned and perfect. Ah, that's better. But you see the guy, this one on the left, is going to jump at Creel or Batsu and just bleh, lunge forward, lunging with its arms, bleh, trying to rip and rend. Uh, one or two, it's Batsu. It is Batsu. Sorry. And just check, double checking real quick here. Yes, two vicious claw attacks. Oof. And I've got a 13 AC these days. Oh, okay. Well, here's the first. And it uh, doesn't, you dodge and nice. weave, and the second he swipes, and then both are miss as uh, he rolls five and a seven. Okay. And the other one jumps at Gryko or, or uh, Rotsack. One or two, it's Gryko. Oh, it jumps at Rotsack. This one's wounded heavily, but it doesn't seem to mind. And Rotsack's wearing that new chain. Yeah, plus one chain mail. So he, that's a, that's just 16 AC, I think, plus one chainmail. Mm -hmm, unless he's got agility uh, bonus. Yeah. Oh, that's a good question. Or is what chainmail is is five? Chainmail's five, and then plus one, I guess, yeah. would be the so six. Thought, oh, he's got 13 agility. So regardless, ooh, that was close. Uh, good job, Rod Sack, miss, miss. And now his turn, he returns. He's just going to do his uh, classic Vorpal deed. Try to dismember this guy. Chop its head off. Finish the stroke. Type his character up. Oh, yeah, it's Battle Axe. That's right. Indeed. But he's got the plus four strength now. Oh, is that right? Yeah, that's. let me get that. Oh yeah! <laughs> wow. Um, well, yeah, he severs it cleanly. Now I have to show you a picture or something. This is perfect, in a way. <laughs> uh, this picture, I was gonna get a lot of this. Can you guys?
Oh, There's... no. Yeah, hey, you've got everybody pretty... here. You see Greco, and you see <laughs> with his battle axe. Or you see Rutsack and Cleave. You yeah. see Greco stabbing away with the one. Yeah, this is basically what's going on. I yeah. know. I just chuckled. I was like, that's no awesome. Uh, <laughs> there's Jim in the back. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Uh, Yikes. So... But that's what happens when he cuts this thing with that mighty deed. He cleaves it twain, but this serpentine thing strikes out and takes a, a hack at him. It's still alive. Wow. And attacking, and it gets an attack, an automatic surprise attack. He was not expecting that. As this creature is fast, and it comes out. Oh. Um, Pardon me. Lost my spot. And here's where things get a little hairy. Shoot. Pardon me, guys. I lost my book. Closed it. Like if we were... Oh, there we are. Okay, this thing. Ouch. Ooh, it just goes snap, snap, twice. It's two bites. Oh, is this that... Uh... Rotsack? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Rather him than me. So it needs to beat a 17. <laughs> wow. That's, oh, that's strong strikes. Check this out. Oh. Oh, so that 16 is just a... It's a little a grim. Hit. That's just a hit. Oh, I thought oh, it was AC 17. 17. Oh, yeah, yeah right. 17. Yeah. Ooh, okay, good, good. That's one miss. The other one definitely hits for a crit. Decisive. Uh, if you want to roll, I got the crit table for monsters right here. Uh, so let me double check here everything quickly. Let me have a quick look here. Ah, okay. Whoa, and this thing has venom. Uh, so I'll roll the... Okay, I rolled two for the crit, Jim. Not bad. They're uh, good. Stunning Pretty blow. Good. The PC falls to the bottom of the initiative count for the remainder of the battle. Oh, Rotsack. The remainder of the battle. So he's already got three. He's already at the bottom, basically. Well, I'll give him a. I'll give him one. There, he's now last. All right, and he has to make a. Save. I'll quickly do that for him a minute. Uh, fortitude. Passes. He's not poisoned. Uh, but he does take some damage. He takes... Plus two... Or plus three, I mean, nine points damage. Ouch. Jeez. He had a bit of damage from earlier? No. From the fight with the Hound? Yeah, know. from the Hound, but that's healed. Okay. Yeah, because I'm wondering why does he have three hits down. Okay, so he's down to six hit points. I shouldn't say that. You see that he takes a vicious bite, and the other one almost hits him. He just manages that, that special chain mill. Saves his butt. He might have died there. He realized as this thing snap, snap, and the skin just falls away like a molting, and it's gone. And then now there's this big, big undead serpent, or maybe it's live. You're not sure. And it is whose turn are we at now? Uh, oh, mine, I believe. I'm after the zombies, oh. right? Yeah, right. Both zombies are gone. Yeah, you're right. Go ahead, Batsu. Um, <clears throat> okay, Batsu wants to hit. He's going after this snake if he can hit it. Um, yeah, with and dog's I'll put a little marker on the snake guy. Ooh, does this? Since it was an animal, right? Does this? Does dog's bane affect it? Because I'm. Oh, I have some bonus to uh, fight I'll give animals. you that for this. It's a bit of a stretch, but I'll. Nice. I'll roll with a d24 then, right? That thing's a serpent thing. I have. Uh, 
Hey, 21. Nice. Let me get a thing here. I got a, a jigger. Oops, not you. Nice. Uh, what was that for again? That was for the snake. To kill it? Oh, I do? Right? Attack him. For some reason, roll 20 is glitching out here. Yeah, I did uh, three damage. Yeah, hold on. I got to restart roll 20. It's okay. A bit of weird thing. Yeah, it's not responding. Okay, you hit the snake. Okay, we'll get back to that in a minute. Okay. As soon as this gets going. Okay, there we go. It's better. It's self-organized. You guys see that white snake thing? Yeah, I can see it. It's kind of translucent. Yeah. Okay, well, that's what we got going right now, I suppose. So this thing... Uh, you did how much damage? Three. Okay. It seems to, you are able to hit it, which is a good sign. And now the other, are, what's going on? Oh, he already, they both went, right? <clears throat> yeah, I think you ended up doing them both at the, on the same turn. Okay, pardon me. I'll reset this thing and we'll start at the top of the order. How about we do that? All right, so Gryco. You're back to you. All right. Seeing what's going on, I'm going to surmise that I need to cut in a way that cuts the thing inside of it as well. So that's I'm going to use that as my deed. Oh. And uh, here we go. Huzzah. <laughs> okay. So it's a little slimy. And uh, I don't hit. No, and <laughs> burn some luck, but always, but that'd be a lot of luck. Yeah, um, yeah, that's too bad because that was a max damage. Real. All right, I uh, I get my mirrors ready, and I make <laughs> it look like I'm in the fight, but I back away, All right. <laughs> putting yeah. everybody else in front of me, but I'm ready to cast. Roger, uh, so what? I guess, yeah. I guess I can just kind of, I move back and I can, I'll defer my turn if that's okay. All right. Uh, now to the first, this the snake now lashes out. I'm going to roll just a uh, die three to see which of the three it attacks. One, two, three across. It attacks. Is it working? Oh, there it goes. Rotsack. Attacking mm. last time, yeah, I did. He's kind of low, it's not good. Just make sure, yeah, he's plus four. Yeesh. Two vicious strikes again. Oh, that armor, though, nice. yeah, armor is holding up. And the other one, uh, is still doesn't seem to have be molted, it's still a zombie a thing, and it'll attack. Uh, same, same thing. I'll roll a d3. They don't seem to but be. But Batsu gets to go first, right? Oh yeah, he does. Okay, Batsu, go ahead, Batsu. Okay. Um. Uh. I'm gonna go after the, the snake again with Dog's Bane. Roger. Dog's Bane. Bane. <laughs> yeah, it's not a dog, but it's ugly enough for it. So. Hey, uh, a Ooh. freaking nat twenty. Yikes. Holy crap. Oh, too bad the damage, but and crit four on table two. Oh, do we have two? Do you have table two available? I do not. Uh, I can look for it quick. I got the book with me. I should. Okay. Thanks. I have other tables. I got the monster table and I got zero level and all wizards. Okay, table two. Uh, blow to chest staggers foe. You can make an immediate free attack. <gasps> Hit him again. Well, that's a nice one. Ooh, that is. So he did two damage. Snake but we'll, we'll see if we get another uh, hit yeah. here. Exciting. And you get a fleeting luck point. Forget, forgetting a... Yes, yes, I marked that. And a 19 oh. to hit for six. Wow. Incredible. Wow. You're, you're hitting this thing. 
They, they, oh, you it. sense that the snake thing is tougher than the than its skin. It's molten. Yeah, no kidding. Mm -hmm. And it's still yeah, at you though. It's still fighting. Uh, yeah. Jeez. Now back to the guy. He gets his two gaw attacks at the moment, and he turns on. We'll see. Well, twenty's been a little slow, but this time he attacks Batsu. Okay, I'll take my fair share. Oh boy. Oh, but he rolls. Oh, the seventeen. Yeah, that's gonna hit. That okay, and this. Oh, that was the ghoul guy. Okay, yeah. So he hits you with his claw attack for one d five. Okay. Dice roll as he manages to claw you viciously for one point nice. of damage. Nice. <laughs> Not too bad. And Rotsack, who has been staggered somehow and like, oh, a blow to the head or something. He's a bit stunned and bloody nose, but he, he's still fighting and he comes back with a... Uh, well, I guess he's going to attack the, the mighty deed. He's going to try... Cut the snake in half. How's that? He's got the plus four, remember, on his strength. Nice. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. That's for and a while, too, Rot isn't it? Yeah, ten minutes. And once Rotsack is done his turn, I'll cast my spell. Oh, nice. Oh, he gets the deed die. And that actually might be enough to hit the... Oh, yeah, the ghouls are pretty slow. They don't have high AC, not like the serpent things. I thought uh, he was it... hitting the serpent. Oh, he was. Pardon me. And he got the deed. I mean, oh, let me double check their AC. Oh, it's 14 AC. And he... Wow, that damage. He cuts it in twain. Oh, nice. Indeed. And it seems it, the wolf halves kind of writhe and then start to dissolve into this goo. And he, he killed it. it. Destroyed it. Whatever. Good job, Batsy. Um, back to Greco. All right, here we go. Uh, so same thing again. Um I'm going to attack and hopefully hit the thing underneath. There we go. Ooh, Huzzah. Huzzah. And you were going for this to cut into both. Yeah. All right. So the way I, I'll do this, you succeeded. You now get an, another attack on the inside creature. All right. You might not hit it, but you do get a, a basically another action that's attacking the thing. Oh, uh, okay. No, I think I hit it. So you destroyed the the shell, killed the thing that splits apart, and then you bite into the creature and behind it for some damage. Nice. Yes. We get that. So how much damage? Six points. Oh, I didn't roll the big one on that one. No. Well, sorry. <laughs> hey, what's up? Creel, you were going to cast a spell? Yeah, but these guys got it under control. Yeah. I, I I make some really big movements with my arms though, like I am. It's helping. <laughs> yeah, everybody, keep going. You got this. The uh, the, the, the plates Pay no are attention behind. to the man behind. <laughs> behind yeah. the mirrors. Um, <laughs> I'm increasing okay. the accuracy of your blows. <laughs> okay, here we go. Uh, see who the first one on the left one is going to attack Rotzak. Thanks, bud. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's carrying it. <laughs> oh, but the second strike is definitely a hit. He really doesn't have the damage. For that. Okay. Yeah, but he's taken. Oh dear. Oh Six. no. Oh, Rotsack goes down. I start sucking the blood out of him. <laughs> I, 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 you laugh. But I actually have something for this. Oh, okay. Nice. He has to make a I roll see. to see if he is poisoned, by the way. Let me quick roll mm -hmm. a minute. Uh, okay, there it is. And he doesn't have any bonuses on this. Okay, no. So, oh, wow. Yeah, he gets a fleeting luck point <laughs> as he defies the poison, but he goes down with this huge strike and ah, he staggers back and Creel's like, you guys got this? He's like, 
<laughs> yes, I, I yell to the others, I'll stabilize Rodsack. Yeah, yeah, and he goes now, back on this creature. I'm seeing two snakes, but one of them, I think, is gone, the, right? The one on the left is dead. Yeah, all right. Okay, good. Yeah. Okay, so that's it. Uh, now it's Batsu's turn. Yeah, I'm, I'm, dude, I'm pissed. He took down uh, Rodsack, yeah. whatever his name Rodsack. is. Um, um, I'm mad. I'm going to uh, send send an attack with dogs, dogs bane to him. Let's see. Finish it. And <clears throat> um, no, I don't have enough fleeting luck for that. I need the reserves. <laughs> yeah, I just. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna spend uh, two fleeting luck. All right. Yeah. And then this these snakes have pretty high AC. Uh, you you know uh, that. I might spend uh, another luck. I just want to see what my my fleeting luck. Five, that's 13. I'll spend one actual luck just to boost that up a little bit. That will be enough, just enough. 14 okay. AC. Nice, okay. Yeah, on these snakes. Well, there you go. Nice. So uh, go ahead. That's for seven damage. Seven damage. Oh, this is a big damage. roll, so I might as well use yeah. my fleeting luck on it. Let's see how many hit points. Oh, he did some damage too. So that hurts it. Uh, still alive. You guys cut it a deep couple times. And then Rotsack is down, of course. And Greiko, we're back to you. Yep. Uh, I... Huzzah. So, um, yeah, I'm going to jam it in its mouth and break its fangs off. That's my deed. <laughs> right on. Ed Rotsack's oh. gonna use a luck point. I... Oh, wow! Done, done, son. Nice. Oh, yeah, that's... I can't believe I got a twenty-three again. That's three twenty-threes in a row. In a row. All right, I'll roll. give you a crit roll. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, all right. So you did nine damage, which almost kills it. Yeah, my crits are crit table three. Uh, yeah, I think fighter. And then Getting up there, yeah. I'm just rolling a D20, right? No, I think you're no, not D20. It's, uh, you're a no. Just check on your uh, the front page. It'll or actually, I've got the book. Oh, I'm sorry, D14. Yeah, I got it. Uh, D14. I got it. Yeah. Thanks, Jim. Oh, good. Uh, and and you're level two, right? Yeah. Okay. Thirteen. Strike breaks foe's jaw. Blood and shattered teeth oh, wow. ooze down the foe's face. Inflict an additional one d8 damage with this strike. Who called that? I know. Right? <laughs> this thing has two hit points. If you get, yeah, roll a two or better. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and it is, it is same thing. It flops nice. around like twisting on its back, and then it starts to dissolve, and it's just left with this kind of uh, these snake skins. There, it's all that's left of these things. All right, I heal rot sack. I've got the the healer venison, so I oh. quickly bandage up his wound. And as I'm cleaning some of the blood away, I notice that the venom hasn't seeped into him. So I'm like, okay, this is not as bad as it seems. You don't have to extract it, uh, Batsu. You kind of looking at these snake skins, kind of going, hmm, make some really dandy. Uh, yeah, I'll take those caps or something. Yeah. <laughs> Our sleeves. Yeah, they're kind of cool. Or anybody, you kind of see them. And they're like, ooh, there's quite a bit of material there. You can make something. Uh, no, good job, everybody. But Rotsack did f go down. I was going to burn a luck point so that he doesn't lose anything. And that would get him back to one hit point. But if you're there to stabilize him, but then he'll lose a stamina. So I was going to use a luck point instead. Yeah, sure. Yeah, and then that way between the two of you, he won't lose a stamina point. Mm -hmm. take a scar but he still has this vicious scar this thing bit him harshly uh ripped him so we'll uh it's been three hour mark sort of and it's there's a bit more to go in this tomb uh so we'll probably pause it here it would be yeah, a, that's a good place for me yep. yeah that works yeah, and then uh, here we are in the middle. You've defeated these things. I'll let you know later on what they are and who they were. You get a sense that they were once... Somebody went perhaps to raid this tomb or something. Mm -hmm. Oh, cool. Uh, 
cursed. Mm, maybe cursed that thing with the, the, the footprints. Maybe they curse them or something. Put snakes yeah. in. Yeah, they, they got the look of like they're wearing the garb. Like they look I, similar to the villagers. Yeah, I don't wonder if we You're might on. find some silver daggers around here somewhere. Yeah, mm-hmm. these guys might have been thieves looking to uh, plunder this tomb. Well, I guess we'll never know. <laughs> I guess we will never <laughs> well, know. We might know. We might We're, know. There's a little more to no, go. I, don't know. I think we'll never know. <laughs> How much did we sell these for uh, back at the, uh, We're done. <laughs> the other place? <laughs> must be the weapons. Yeah, unrelated. How much did we sell yeah. those for? <laughs> Now, I didn't show you the further the map because I can't. It's, it's kind of a bit of a giveaway, but I'll touch it up and such like that. Prepare it for the next session. Sounds good, guys. That was a good session. Yeah, yeah. great. Great yeah. one. Yeah, lots of fun. I'll, I'll probably end up posting this one 